This is a HeadGum Podcast. Hey, buddy, it's Weiger. So as the WGA and SAG-AFTRA strikes have continued, I started waiting to record these non-intro intros until like the day before release. I guess just out of some vague hope that we'll have a resolution and then I can do a proper scripted intro. But obviously that hasn't happened. So, I, you know, I was talking about this with somebody else. The sort of pro-business supply cider Wall Street bootlicker sort loves to talk about the cold logic of the free market, like it's this pure objective instrument that only cares about economic efficiency. But there's nothing logical about losing $500 million due to the strikes when if you just agreed to all of the WGA's demands, it would cost you about $50 million, as has happened with Warner Brothers Discovery, you know, there's nothing logical when you whine about having your feelings hurt because you've been justifiably portrayed as the bad guy, as we've seen with some of these CEOs. There's nothing logical about sacrificing your company's core business, and not just now, but like into next year. What movies are going to come out next year? Where's the fall television lineup going to be? You're doing this purely out of spite or because you're scrambling to save face as you take the L. These things aren't logical. They're about ego and power, which are the only things CEOs value as much as money. Anyway, um, solidarity with UAW, the auto workers union, uh, they may be on strike in a matter of days. You know, just like with the entertainment industry, if these auto companies can pay their CEOs, they can pay their workers. Also, uh, I'm wearing my The Finch Man shirt and my blank check ball cap because this coming Sunday, the Doughboys will guest on blank check discussing David Fincher's Seven. Wow. Uh, we did a bad job, but it was a lot of fun. Uh, and the episode is very long, so look for that if you're a lover of content. You know, I think we like to say that Doughboys is a bad podcast that has good guests. Um, and this week's no exception. Got a banger of a guest this week. Conversely, uh, Blank Check is a great podcast that sometimes has shitty guests like the Doughboys. Anyway, enjoy this week's episode about Sidecar Donuts. <laughs> Welcome to Doughboys, the podcast about chain restaurants. I'm Nick Weiger, along with my co-host, Atlas Chugged, the Spoon Man, Mike Mitchell. Okay. A little Ayn Rand reference. Atlas Chugged instead of Atlas Shrugged. Love, love Ayn Big Rand. fans. Yeah. Big Rand heads here. Uh, Fountainhead. This roast, which my wife thought up, is inspired by Mitch coining the term geography dictionary during a recent Doughboys double episode, John D. in Los Angeles. And there's a little uh, postscript. Uh, she, uh, John D.'s wife, said I could submit it. Hence, this submission is typical behavior, atypical behavior for a Doughboys fan. Roastspoonman at gmail.com. What's a fountainhead about? I don't know. I don't read that shit. No. I read one. I, I read an Ayn Rand novella when I was in high school. I think it was, and that's the only thing I ever read. I think it was called Anthem. It was really bad. It's like, this writing is fucking wretched. Even as a ninth grader, I was like, this is terrible. Ayn Rand, her name is just hard to say for me. I feel like it's always tough to remember how to say Ayn Rand. Because you want to say Ayn Rand. Yeah. Yeah. So I just kind of stay away from it altogether, I guess. That's my reasoning. Anyways, hi. Welcome to the show. <laughs> I mean, you do have deeply held libertarian beliefs, yeah, but you just that. don't like yeah, 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 Ayn yeah, Rand that, as a writer. That too. I love all those. I love all the libertarian <laughs> 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 Uh, is Rand Paul named for Ayn Rand? It, he, that's he, really he embarrassing might be. if that's jail. Yeah. He's a piece of shit too, right? Yeah, no one likes that guy. All right. See, I know who's I know who's bad. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to do this right now. We have a great guest. <laughs> I want to say how the hell to Spoon Nation. Although I do want to say, Mitch, <sighs> our segment for today is who's bad. So get ready for that. <laughs> oh god. Oh, god. We're gonna have to return to this. Emma, will you play a drop? Let's just get all the embarrassing stuff over with, which is the entire episode of our show. 
You know what? I can relate to Shrek in a lot of ways. He's right about a lot of stuff anyway. Mm. Some body once told me the world is gonna roll me. I ate the sharpest spoon in the shed. Wow. She was looking kind of dumb with her fingers and her thumb up Lou Dog's ass. I don't like that story. I know. You I, love it. No, no, I don't. Okay. <laughs> thumb up Lou Dobbs ass? What is that? No, it wasn't Lou Dobbs. <laughs> Lou Dog. We were talking about Sublime. And, oh. And Brad Noel used to put his finger up Lou Dog. He'd be like, he'd be on the boardwalk. He'd be like, hey, check this. Like, he'd see, like, an attractive lady. He'd be like, check this out. And he put his thumb in Lou Dog's ass. Yes. That's what that's from. I mean, I love the band Sublime. I don't I don't mean to besmirch this this dead man's name, but that's what he would do. Not a Sublime song. What? The Shrek song. That's not Sublime. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know the Shrek song isn't Sublime. I'm no, just kind of, like, throwing a sh- Sublime reference in there. Feels yeah, they just, at the topic. end, they threw in a, yeah, they, 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 they mixed it up, Nick. It was a, a... Who made that drop? Do they think that song's by Sublime? I don't, they maybe think it's by Sublime. The title is Shrek This Out, with exclamation points, 23 seconds long in parentheses. Mm-hmm. Mitch, made you a drop that really pushed the ratio of effort versus outcome at SGH Bro on Twitter. If anyone likes reading a single shitty tweet... Once every six months. Have a good day. Much love, pal. Yeah, labor intensive Ex- to pull out individual words and assemble those into a lyric, existing lyric. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Shrek's been gone for a while now. Shrek, Shrek's got to come back. Yeah, it's Shrek should long. come back. Imagine what like Shrek 4 would do right now. Are they up to 4? They're on 4. Because I, I saw Puss in Boots. I saw the Puss in Boots movie. Uh, yeah. Which I thought was great. Uh, and the crowd is fucking, they're fucking... Hot for the Shrekiverse, man. They're ready to go. Do you know my issue with Shrek is I think that he should become handsome at the end. I know that that's not what the movie is he about. He did. I know. That happens in Shrek 2. I know. Mitch, and, he looks, and he realizes and he that's looks, not what brings happiness to him. He looks good. I want to end too. He looks good. I think he looks good as a human. He looks like you. That's what you like yeah. about it. <laughs> as a human, he looks like me. Yeah, he does. I don't look like the ogre. Thank no. you. No. All right. No, you're a handsome guy. Thank you. Yeah, and then, you look like you. You do look like human Shrek, though. <laughs> all right, let's he introduce our guest. <laughs> that's the whole thing. The women are <sighs> swooning for him. The princesses are throwing themselves all over her. Yeah. Oh, that's all true. over him. That's what mm-hmm, happens. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Let me tell you, that's what happens to the swoon man. Let's not. <laughs> <laughs> My mom and sister are just in town. <laughs> <laughs> My mom and sister are here for two weeks, and you know what? We got some stuff organized. That's great. Yeah, yeah. I'm glad to hear it. I threw away, like, I, like, finally got rid of the dress I wore in Pretty Dad, a sketch we did 15 years ago. I thought you should have put that up. I know. Send that to the Academy I didn't Museum. Wanna, I, that's, I didn't, like, <laughs> the Academy? <laughs> yeah. I didn't want to get rid of it either. Was that in the, was that on a stage sketch, or was that for the one from? It was for, it was for the show. It was for the yeah. show, for the IFC show. And my mom was like, what happened in the sketch? And I'm like, my son gets stood up for prom, and I dress up as his prom date and then suck his dick. You <laughs> said all of that? I, I explained the whole thing You to told her. your mom? <laughs> you told uh, your mom that you suck your son's dick in a sketch? <laughs> and she's like, you can get rid of this. So I got rid of it. <laughs> Anyways, we should introduce our guest. Uh, our guest today, uh, very, very excited to have him in the, on the, in the studio here for the podcast, David Wayne. Hi, David. Hi. Thanks for making time for us. I love being here. This is I try to come to the, on, be on your show every couple of weeks. <laughs> 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 well, glad we could make it happen uh, this particular week. Uh, I, I want to ask you about, cause, uh, about your history a little bit, because your first time on the show. Sounds like the both of you have your thumbs up Lou Dobbs ass. <laughs> <laughs> Another bad man for our bad man segment. Lou Dobbs. Oh, Lou Dobbs. Bad guy. Mm. Yeah. Uh, let, I, I want to ask you a little bit about uh, growing up in Ohio. Because yeah. Ohio, like, you know, and, and, and fuck, have we been, we've been there once. We went we there a, once. We, we did a show in Cleveland. What part? Yeah, Cleveland is where I'm from. Yeah, okay. We did a show in Cleveland. Cincinnati this, wants us to come. We, we did never... not do Culver's in Cleveland. Oh, no? No, we did uh, uh, the- uh, Swenson's. Oh, I'm sorry, not Culver's. Swenson's. We did Thank Swenson's. You, we had a lovely meal oh, at Swenson's. Oh, Swenson's. Yeah. Great. Yeah, yeah, Swenson's was great. Well, they had a Swenson's in um, Coral Gables, Florida, where my sister was going to college when I was like 10. Wow. And I was so enamored with Swenson's. I loved it. And then now they have a new one in Ohio. Yeah. Lovely time there. And also uh, roller skaters. They're ro- they're right? They Don't they? They roller skate right, right to your car. They give you the tray. 
Uh, or on your window, like in the 50s? Yeah. My memory of it, Mitch, we were, we were there on tour, and the it was raining, right? Is that correct? Yes, I was driving. You, you were driving. Mm-hmm. It was raining, and they were roller skating in the rain and weren't missing a beat and yeah. uh, brought us our meal, and it's a place where you eat in your car, and I loved it. It's a I great w- meal. I wish I could, I could remember the name. Of the and hell, I was driving in the rain. I was doing a pretty good job, too. <laughs> <laughs> Just want to point that out as well. And they'll, they'll, it, cause in Cleveland, it's often snowy and cold, but they'll still bring you ice cream outside. Yeah. That's the thing. Cold climates like cold drinks. And I didn't yeah. realize that. And like, like ice cream sales are bigger in like cold weather states, which yeah. I was surprised by. Like Culver's, who the, everyone That's in, right. the, in Wisconsin will get mad at me um, for fucking that up. But I liked, we liked Swenson's a lot too. We got a fried bologna sandwich, was like a big thing mm-hmm. there. And it has um, that 70s quality on the interiors usually. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We it, we drove by Dayton, Ohio, Dave Ferguson's uh, mm-hmm. hometown. That's right. Was, was in my sketch group. And um, and he's a big Skyline Chili. Are you a Skyline Chili fan? Great question. I don't even know Skyline Chili. Wow. That's a. That's it, more of a Cincinnati thing, right? Because, yeah, there's a whole Cincinnati thing, which is a different. Cincinnati may as well be a southern city. It's on the border of Kentucky, mm. whereas Cleveland, Ohio, is on America's north coast on Lake Erie, and we're more part of the Steel Belt. Mm. Wow, okay. Because we did, we did that on the... Was that after a Chicago show we did it, I think, is where we... I don't know. I can't remember the order of operations mm-hmm. in terms of touring the Midwest. All I know is that I follow the Swenson's Instagram account, and I occasionally see a Swenson's thing pop up every I so got, often. I got buried in the Swenson's menu for a second while we were talking, because I was just going going down memory lane. What a way to go. Oh, it's the, such a rabbit hole. We're all, we all have gone down that rabbit hole many times. <laughs> <laughs> it's unavoidable. <laughs> Uh, the founded by Wesley Pop Swenson, but this is a this is a thing I'd, I'm remembering now. Mitch, their burger is called the Galley Boy. That's right, the Galley Boy. <laughs> what a name! A little bit creepy. <laughs> it does. <laughs> I think we should have the Galley Boy on the show. We should have like a, it should be like a character. I now realize both of my sisters actually worked at Swenson's. Wow. Yeah, that's, that's amazing. A, that's crazy. Were they roller skating? No, I don't think it was a skating Swenson's. Got it. <laughs> Galley Boy does sound like a Chris Elliott movie. <laughs> Galley <Please>. boy, <laughs> get in here, Galley boy. <laughs> Time for my morning fluff. <laughs> oh, so okay. So, what are the foods that make you think of home outside of of Swenson's? Oh my goodness, Slimans corned beef. Slimans corned beef, Cleveland, Ohio. Oh my, it's ah. called Slimans. Yes, S L Y M A N. The best corned beef in the world. Wow. Um, I, I mean, was thinking from, of Slimer. I, I know it from growing up. I don't. I haven't had it in years, to be honest. But. Yeah. Uh, and and the West Side Market in Cleveland is a huge old old market with you know butchers and fishmongers and stuff like that. It was That's great. cool. And uh, stuff like that deli, Corky and Lenny's was the deli that we went to, which was great. And Sands Delicatessen, I guess that's yeah, that's what I think of in Cleveland. And diners. So a big diner deli culture. I didn't know yeah. about that. It's like you know working man's town. Sure, yeah. Not me, but. <laughs> 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 All right, so you're you're in Ohio. You grew up in Ohio. You go to NYU, obviously New York City. You know, it's got the five boroughs Can I ask there: you a Brooklyn, oh, Jesus the Christ. Bronx, you know, there's a, Queens, Staten yeah, Island, and Manhattan. Right. No, that's it. Yeah, that's right. I got to tell you though, there's uh-huh. a, the restaurant in Manhattan. There was anyway called Edwards, uh-huh. and they used to have a Cincinnati, Ohio night every month. Whoa, he was from Cincinnati, and they would serve that chili you talked about. Oh wow, wow. yeah. Did you go and you were like, I'm from Ohio? I never went to it. But because my wife at the time worked there, and that's the end of that story. Wow. (laughs) I have a question for you. Do you remember your first New York slice? Ooh, well, I was always sort of fascinated with New York from when I was born. I just, I, as a kid, I was like, I want to go where there's the Muppets, and I want to go where Saturday Night Live is, and... So I went there probably when I was eight and had a slice, and I, I'm sure I loved it. But then I, when I got to college, I lived in the village where NYU is, and I had a whole map of where I thought the best slices were, and I just was never shutting up about it. Do you remember? <laughs> it was your own map? Well, yeah. I, I think I drew it out at points, or I would draw wow. it for, I would draw it for, if someone asked me about pizza, I would sit them down and draw a map of, here's where to get the best pizza, here's where to get the best bagels. You know, so you're like, there's this place in Staten Island, or you can go over to the Bronx. Oh, no, and you no, get a slice of, over there. I was very village centric. Got it. Okay, it was all in the village. It was all in the village. But like, you could have, in theoretically, been like, there's one in Manhattan. There's right. another one in. But Queen. I was so sure uh-huh. that I was right that these are the best sure. in the whole city, having never ventured out of the village. Got it. That makes sense. 
I made you a map. There was like tiki theaters on it and like a few other. <laughs> Although one time, like, I don't know, 15, 20 years ago, there was this cab driver uh-huh. who would take you on a food tour of the five boroughs. Did you ever wow. hear about that? That rules. And he, he was this weirdo cab driver and you would go and he would take you to the places you never would go to, like right. way far out there. And you'd be like, try this weird fried Oreo or try this, you know, this thing that you can only get here. And it was really cool. Wow. I feel like we should. I'd love to take this. Down. Yeah. So like, like I, you know, I've been to Manhattan. Certainly, I spent some time in Queens. I've been to Brooklyn, but very little in the Bronx. And certainly, I've never set foot on Staten Island. Oh, I love to see all five boroughs. Staten Island's a crazy place. I've heard this. Yeah, it's wild. It's cool. You- we had a, we had no, Mitch. We had, we were in San Diego, and yeah. we had a, a driver. Do you remember? We were taking a, we got a ride over to. Oh, you're talking about the, the weird car door driver guy. You weren't in this because you drove separately. I did drive. Uh, you missed out on this Uber ride where we talked to the driver who had moved to San Diego from Staten Island, and he was talking about how Staten Island was weird, and he liked San Diego better. Yeah, I, were you in the? You weren't with uh, an, an us. Remember Amelia, the weird door. The, remember what I'm talking about? A weird door. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> Are you thinking of Narnia? <laughs> Remember the Uber we got in? It had the door. It had the the suicide door that came down. Oh, oh. God! Thank God. Uh, no wait, no, I don't remember. Oh this. fucking <laughs> shit! It happened. It happened. We're, uh, We've all been through a suicide door. <laughs> <laughs> I got a couple questions. Do you still remember like a couple of your favorite pizza spots? And then that's one question. Then the second is. Do you got a Muppets ranking? I guess Muppets ranking could be a lot of different I was things. a member, I was a card carrying member of the Muppet fan club as a little kid. Whoa! And I think Beaker was my, the one that, my my pick. Uh, of, the, I had a poster is, of Beaker. Is this an old school? Because I was a, I was in the Nintendo fun club and you would okay. get like a membership Yeah, you get a like card. Sending, this was that era of like- Get you, stuff. Yeah, you get like some, they send you something every month. It was usually made of paper, but it was great. Yeah, it's kind of like Nintendo we, Fun Club seems weirder. I was I got Nintendo Power every month. Before but. that was the Nintendo Fun Club. You got a little fan magazine. Club was the yeah, you got a magazine. Yeah, yeah, it was pretty awesome. I loved being That's a member rad. of the Muppet Fan Club. Beaker Beaker really your, cool. was your top guy. I think I real and Bunsen Honeydew. I love that whole. The, the, they're a great duo. He's yeah. never uh, Nick has never seen the Muppet movie, which is a top it's ten true. movie Muppets, for me. Muppets are a huge pop culture blind spot for me. I watched mm. uh, on the podcast for we we watched um, Muppet together Christmas Carol. Muppet Christmas Carol. Carol and Muppet Treasure Island. I loved Muppet Treasure Island. I thought that was sure. a real hoot. And I actually worked for the Jim Henson Company um, on a project on a show called Earth and Ed that was on Disney Plus. But like the Muppets Orcross themselves, Planet. I don't know. AKA a ton of Planet for our listeners. Yeah. yeah. But uh, here you are p- promoting uh, a show, uh, and the unions are going to get in a really busted. A, 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 I'm not you promoting got, it. You I'm got saying it worked busted. on it. It's a statement of fact. You, you, you fucking busted. Yeah, you know. Um, Didn't say I had a favorite Muppet or anything. I the don't know, Muppet that might be show promotion. though was really I and Sesame Street before that, but I loved. <laughs> I used to get like giddy when it was almost seven o'clock time for the Muppet Show every Saturday night or whenever it was. Yeah, and, yeah. Oh my god, I was so into it. What's your favorite Muppet property? Pro- um, property, I think, like, uh, yeah. over <laughs> on um, La Cienega. And, okay, sure, you know, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> right, that's where I was. That's working. a great spot. Yeah, they're building Internet. condos there right now, and I just think yeah. they've, they've done a really good job in monetizing <laughs> that over the years. Is there a okay? So like, like, but it, like, did you like? Was it the Muppet TV show? Was it or was it the Muppet movie? Like, what's I like? Think oh, this for the... me, it was the TV show. For some, mm. I think you know why because it was in the era when we first had a Betamax oh, in sure. our house, and mm. so I would tape those shows. And watch them over and over and over, and and especially the one with Cloris Leachman as the guest, where the, they oh, get the it was a pigs in space episode, and they got trapped in the basement, and it was just I loved it. I don't wow! Know. The football team used to make me do Kermit impressions. Uh, I'm not good at it anymore I uh-huh. think, since my voice changed, but that was uh, I was a big Kermit. Well, you could try. I can't. I yeah, really at this point, can't. You really do, should try. I, I really can't. I mean, you do don't it say anymore. something like that without. <laughs> I can't. I, I can do. I used to be able to do Annabelle from the Muppet Babies pretty well. Okay. Okay. But Muppet okay, so Babies. So I do. Is, I did watch Muppet Babies. That's, see, that, that's the one thing I did. This is strange. See, I, for me, that was like I'm not. That doesn't feel wrong to me, so I never yeah. watched it. I think I liked it because it was a cartoon, and at the puppets, mm. I felt like unnerved me. Right. But like puppets as a, unnerved. Yeah. You? But as an adult, I can understand. But like you know, as a kid, like you just have a kid. I was brain. fascinated, but I even set up my own because I loved watching the 60 minute segment where they went backstage at the Muppets. And then I set up my own thing where I could stand fully upright and then hold up the puppet above my head and then have the camera 
also at a high level so that I could pretend that I was a Muppet performer. That was my dream at the that's time. That's so cool. That's cool. Yeah. That's cool. Wow. Yeah, that's cool. Of course, I could have pursued it, but I didn't. I feel like the Muppet, you, I think you made the, I think, I think you, you made the right, right choice. Yeah. I think no, I'm doing the, great. I'm doing yeah. great. <laughs> let's not, let's, who's kidding who? Yeah. <laughs> You, I don't think you need them, and I and I think we're long past me doing the impression now too. So I think that yeah, I think we've all forgotten about it. <laughs> <laughs> um, what do you think, Nick? Have we forgotten about his uh, thing about mentioning that he can do a Kermit impression? I, I mean, oh, you just brought it up right now. I had yeah. no idea. Completely <sighs> exited my mind. Okay. <laughs> So you're saying I went to New York. That's right. So you're in New York, and and <laughs> you were you. the bitch got you on Muppet hierarchy. But I'm curious about like oh, the pizza. Yeah, did, yeah, because you had this pizza map. Great yeah. Muppet caper. Also, Muppets are in New York, by the way. Right. So that's okay. a great crossover. Well, you know, a lot of the thing in New York at the time was it's all about Ray's Pizza. Everyone yeah. talking about Ray's Pizza. Famous then, Ray's. Yeah. There was a lot of well, there was a, a lot of confusion because a lot of pizza places named themselves Ray's. Same thing happened out here with Tommy's. Right. And they had famous Ray's and original famous Ray's, famous Mm -hmm. original Ray's, and they were all different. And the original, real, actual first Ray's was called Ray's Pizza on Prince Street Mm. or just Ray's on Prince. And that was, by some accounts, or maybe Lombardi's uh, on Spring, was the first pizza at all in New York. Um, and, and the kind of pizza we eat in the U S is actually invented in New York, maybe at the world's fair. Yeah. Wow. I'm making some of this up I, or, or at least I don't, <laughs> I don't remember which parts I made up and which parts might be true. But, uh, the, um, my, my go-to was Joe's pizza on Carmine okay. and Bleecker. Yeah. And then there was the one called Ben by Frank's pizza, which was, um, on like third street and Thompson. And that was really, really good. And ben I like by the, Frank's. It was called Ben by Frank's. Maybe like the name Ben? Yeah. My guess is that it was called Ben's Pizza and then oh. maybe he sold it to Frank yeah. and, or something. I don't know. Um, and there were a few others. I, I mean, and they, I liked the big, the classic, you know, foldable, yeah. thin slice. I just- You know what? Yeah. Still I did, great. I did a pizza tour with some of my Quincy friends and we went to New York and we went to DeFara's and we went to Joe's. We had Joe's late night, the one near the Comedy Cellar. Is that the one? Yep. And that- it was a huge hit. I loved Joe's, uh, and it was like a late night slice, and it was great. There's one near Times Square that I had when I was there most recently when we did a show there. That's right. Um, did they have? Wait, is Joe's? There are Joe's out here. I think it's the same yeah, it's thing. It's the same. I the mean, same it's the thing. same company, but they, as they say, the water's different. The water's different. The water right? is different. Yeah. And That's so, why Larry King got the water with his. Remember, yeah, he got the water the bagels brought in from and the, the bagels. Company. Yeah. He does. He he got it shipped in. But the Joe's Pizza out here is pretty good. But the the thing about it is the foot traffic. That's why it's so good is because they're always crowded and they're always hot and they're always coming out. And you go yeah. to those classic places and you're like, one plane. and blah, 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 blah. It's the whole feel of it. It's great. I did. I will say as someone who lived as, has lived in his entire, entire life in L.A. County, when I went to New York for the first time and I went as an adult, the notion of just walking into a place and like they give you a slice of pizza on a paper plate, like that was a complete novelty to me. Like there are places like here that that, that do that out here, but it's not the same sort of thing. I, and so like yeah. like pizza by the slice was was like a revelation. Well, I will tell you, li- when I lived in New York, first of all, I was 30 pounds heavier. Um, and partly it was because whenever I went from point A to point B, I would just pick up stuff and eat it along the way. And mm. it was so easy to do and so much great food. And I loved it. I was so amazing. Like, yeah. And and here I've gone. I get super hungry because you it, you have to stop and park and think and order and it takes forever. And <laughs> more 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 walking in New York though, right? Do you, do you, it, it feels. I feel like it would be good for me in that way. You gotta get out. Yeah. You gotta get. You gotta get on the streets. You're always moving. You're, it's just the best. I'm walking here from a New York movie. Boom. That's. You know. That's th- just what people say there. It's Dustin Hoffman. Right? Doesn't he? Midnight the, Cowboy. Midnight Cowboy. Midnight Cowboy yeah. I forgot yeah. the name. Yeah. It's kind of our relationship in many ways. The Dustin Hoffman and uh. Oh, you mean between the characters? Rain the Man. Yeah. yeah. It's like you guys are like Rain Man. <laughs> That's what it is. It's, it's kind of a Rain Man thing. Yeah. Oh, uh, do you? So, do, is there any food beyond pizza that like like you like you really loved and you really uh, crave uh, when you go back to New York or when you think about New York? Well, the bagels. The bagels, of course. sure. Do you have a bagel spot? I had Essa bagel. Yeah, Essa sure. bagel was a favorite of mine for I sure. Essa bagel. Essa bagel's good. Um, but then I think I gra- I decided I it was too heavy for me at a certain point. Um, but uh, H&A, you know, the classics. But then I also love when I go to New York, um, 
to go. There was a place that I think is probably long gone called Dojo, mm. which I always think about, which was like a super cheap, quasi healthy place, but you would get a soy burger dinner for like two bucks. Mm. And I loved it. It was just like a fun, comforting. And San Loco, which uh, when I was in college had dollar tacos uh, and they were open till 2 a.m. And I mean, every night but on your way home, San Loco. Yeah, why the not? The best. And then so good too. Hi ho, Kermit the Frog here. <laughs> <laughs> Splice that in earlier. <laughs> <laughs> That's Kermit. Still, I mean, it, I was better at it back in the day. Did yeah, you? No, yeah, did you? I'm sure. Were you able to do the distinction between Kermit and Ernie? Uh, no, uh, Ernie is. Uh, I couldn't do. I, I like. I would just go like, "Hey, bro!" Like yeah. that's all I could do. Well, I think uh, Kermit was like a little th thicker, yeah, and yeah. then Ernie was a little thinner, but yeah. it's the oh. same voice. <laughs> that's that. That is that's. See, this is. I mean, this is Muppet stuff. You wouldn't. You wouldn't get then, some of and it. Bert would say, "Ernie, what are you doing?" <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I'm the man of a thousand voices. That's what I'm known for. <laughs> and then I. This is Animal from Muppet Babies. Go bye bye. I could do that kind of. I, I gave a half ass version of it. I like I'm embarrassing one. myself in front of someone great. who I respect so much. <laughs> well, I, th I think if President Reagan was here, he would say, Well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. You mentioned bagels. And I think the, the thing, you know, we're talking about different ring shaped breakfast food today, the donut. Mm. And I'm curious, first off, where do, like, where do you rank bagels versus donuts? Oh, man. Which do you, do you have like a strong preference for one or the other? And then also any general thoughts on donuts? Like, what are your biases coming in? I mean, for a ring shaped uh, snack, I'm usually going to go for the bagel. Mm. Um, 100%. I am a Jew. Uh, and so it reminds me of the old country. Sure. <laughs> um, <laughs> And uh, I do have a very favorite bagel place here in Los Angeles, Ooh. Hank's Bagels. Hank's Bagels. Hank's Bagels. I don't know if you guys have uh, no, talked I've about not. that. Oh, that's what we should have talked about. Hank's Bagels uh, has at least two now. They, when when I first uh, became a fan, they only had one on Riverside in the Valley. And now they have another one in another part of the Valley, on uh, also on Riverside, but further, or no, on Ventura. Who cares? Anyway, um, <laughs> it's a real deal, very New York style. One guy does it. But now he's got a big business growing, and it's so incredible. Wow! I yeah. feel like there's there was a there the, as you'll remember this the burger craze of about two thousand seven two thousand eight. Sure, of course. So the burger craze led to the fried chicken craze, and I feel like after I think that specifically like a fried chicken sandwich. Craze. Yeah, sorry, fried chicken sandwich craze. If you're but, and you're and you're talking in terms of like these are like, you know, in LA. gastro pubs sure. kind of doing the elevated version of that. Yeah, but then I think right. that there was. I mean, but I think that uh, a rising tide raises all ships, Nick. Mitch, uh, that's one of the more sage things you've ever said. Well, you said it with such hostility, yeah. too. Yeah, I was mad at him. I'm fucking pissed. <laughs> but because- Rises but, all ships, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> Are we on Lou Dobbs' show? What's going on here? <laughs> because- um, oh, because Don't uh, break the arm again. After that, I, I didn't fixed. break it the first time. Okay. Marty broke it. Uh, after that- um, Pizza, I feel like they're like, oh, we're, we're like, we're gonna, or, you know, like pizza's the next thing. Pizza was the next thing, but then bagels because there's the Yeasty Boys, yeah, uh, and there's a few other bagel spots. That kind of bagels, I know. Yeah, is one. I always bagel. remember when I when I lived in New York in around that time, two thousand seven eight. But I was coming to L A a lot for mm -hmm. work. I was struck that this this town L A is so health crazed and health conscious, and every block though is a cheeseburger place, like, yeah. and Big way more than in, way more than New York, like. B burgers everywhere. Well, yeah. Well, this is the thing. It's like uh, the big burger chains all started in like L.A. and start are started right. in the L.A. area. They're all, all from Southern California. Yeah, you know, yeah. It's, it's like it's the, that's like a big part I think of the cultural identity. It's like it's a it's a burger town. It's a taco town. Um, and also there's like a lot like specifically the places that do like. I mentioned Tommy's, but like it's it's a very heavy burger that's got like chili and cheese on I it. Can't or a place do, that also I serves can't pastrami. do a Tommy burger. Yeah, it's a lot. It's a no. lot. It's a lot. It's intense. Now it's all just uh, smash burgers. That's like what we've now evolved right. into. Yeah. It's all smash burgers now, which are good. Mm -hmm. Like that place on, on Franklin next to the 101 that, that I forget what it's called. Oh, yes. Uh, uh, yeah. And it, that was, it used to be a French restaurant. Right. And I forget the name of it too. There, it's it's right in the uh, the right next to the 101, basically across the street from the Hollywood. It's on Franklin, Tower. like near yeah. Argyle. Yeah, yeah. And I know what you're talking about. I don't know what it's called. 
um, and where the 101 Cafe used to be to the left uh -huh. of that, yeah. if you're looking at it, which is now something else. Clark Street too. Diner. Clark Street Diner, which is good. Had breakfast there this morning. Wow. It's very good. It is good. It I, is really good. I loved 101, so it was sad to see it go, but then a great place came in. It's and fun. they left it. They kept it the same, basically. Yeah. yeah. Except just made the menu better. Mm -hmm. uh, I loaded up the Hanks website, and their their mascot and logo is a bagel with arms and legs. You yeah. see this guy? Look at that. We just were talking about this. That is kind of scary in some ways, I guess, but. <laughs> <laughs> it's an abomination. Yeah. Like, I guess if you that's... saw that thing and it was alive, you'd think it was in torment. But it's not as bad as, like, the chickens that are eating the chicken kind of this thing. This is what we, we were just talking about. We brought that up recently about. in our Pollo Campero episode. Actually, will that will that... No, that'll come out before this one. And yeah, it's that their mascot is a chicken serving a plate serving of chicken. Serving a plate of chicken, which we say that's which demented. Is, so They're often tests. that's what you, or the pig eating the ribs. And, you know, right. It's just so weird. Yeah. Like Lars von Trier shit. It's like twisted. Mascot should only be humans. I know we just talked about the Muppets. And um, I think the Muppets would not be as fun if they were all humans. I don't want to do, interrupt everything, but Lars happens to be one of my best friends. So if you could just... Not joke okay. About I, him. Hey, Emma. Can we? I'll just take. I'll just yeah. say a different director just and just throw this in there. Thanks, David Cronenberg. Shit. Yeah. Fucking what a jerk weirdo. He is. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking psycho. His weird movies. You know who I like? Lars von Trier. What yeah. He's a great guy. <laughs> He's good. <laughs> okay. We're oh donuts. Yeah, donuts. Yeah. But like, okay, so you're, you're, you have a you have a, a a bagel fandom. I think I ultimately land. I had a lot more donuts than bagels as a kid, and most I mean, of the bagels I had were bad bagels. Even though they're but the same shape, they're they're taken in such different contexts. Totally it's different. One hundred percent. Teen bagel all the way. I think I've become I've come yeah, around, I, especially having like good bagels, not like uh, this bagel sort of in a plastic bag from the grocery store. Mm. Um, it, it, like I I think that. It's closer to being like it's like a meal, right? Like you can have like yeah. a bagel for breakfast, and you're not going to be like just. It, it's not going to completely make you super heavy and worn down. I talk about this on. I've talked about I this mean, before, can. but Lenders bagels, I believe it was called. Yeah, they were sure. Frozen in the that's freezer. what I had growing up. I loved them. Onion Lenders. That's the first time I had an onion bagel. I, I loved them from a nostalgic point of view, but they were grocery store. Are they bad? They're not. Well, they were processed. You know. Sure. Yeah. Frozen bagels. But I, for for me, because like now when I have like, for instance, I'll have a Thomas, like I'll have a Thomas, ba like a sure. Thomas English Muffins makes bagels and I'll have one of those when I'm back in Massachusetts and the lenders in my mind is better because, and I'm like, is it frozen? Was that why? Is it a better quality bagel? It was than, decent for yeah. what, a, for a grocery store type bagel. Yeah. But, um, yeah. I had one every morning. But I'm rarely in a position where I'm like, should I have a bagel or a donut? It's right. Two yeah. different things. Two different reasons to eat anything. Do you have a favorite donut? Uh, a favorite kind of donut? Yeah. I think I will often go for the unglazed plain cake donut. Oh wow! Yeah, that's good. Because I like that with a coffee. So that's just that's like fun. a straightforward like classic donut. I also like it because it's usually the least heavy and sweet. 100%. Do you have yeah. a least favorite donut? Hertz uh, donut. It's not good. Least favorite donut. I Let's say it. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> I, well, I mean, uh, we, we, we saw today a, a donut that had bacon in it, which was looked pretty gross to yes. me. Yes. None of that. Um, and yeah, like big sort of goopy ones that you, you can't even touch without getting it all over your hands. Yeah. I'm, I'm not super into that. I, I th America's, a fas fas America's fascination with maple bacon donuts it doesn't it just hasn't rubbed off on me look, I don't, ha, look my favorite donut is a maple bar i love a maple sure. bar but but i don't need bacon on there i don't get why people like the it's never the bacon's never good there was okay so what you were talking about earlier of like kind of like the the different stages of uh like like fascination with like burgers and fried chicken sandwiches and what have you i think mm. there also was like a bacon and dessert phase yeah like yeah. that happened i remember there were like the ice bacon cream sundays. And, yeah, exactly disgusting yeah and, and i feel like though that that time is gone i feel like the sun is set on we're the bagel dessert we don't need it anymore mm -hmm. but I, i'm so the bacon dessert rather but yeah this place is still uh is still clinging to it um yeah I'm i like to remember the, the 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 donut chain that's grown and grown that where they fresh donuts now what's that called again you know what Krispy I mean. Kreme? Krispy Kreme. Yeah. Yes. When that first came to New York, because it was a big regional hit, but it would, there was none in New York for right. years and years, and they first opened it there, and I was definitely obsessed with that. I would wait in line wow. uh, regularly. 
I was in, that was probably the, the most donutty I was ever in my life. We I mean, having the, the, the fresh boys. hot glazed for the first time from. Yeah, when it comes right off the thing and that's it's really, super hot. Yeah. And it's, it's, that's a showstopper. We, were, we talked about the yeasty boys. I was listening to the beastie boys last night. I was, and they mentioned, they talk about Krispy Kreme in one of their songs from back in the day. Wow. Maybe What You Want. I don't know, or, or or maybe, I don't know, maybe it was three MCs. If I didn't know two. better, I would say the Yeasty Boys name is inspired by the Beastie Boys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it's I, possible. Yeah, I can't believe I don't know. It. I mean, I obviously it's it. not, but I mean, if. Yeah. If, yeah. <laughs> well, look, let's uh, let's take a break and we'll talk about it. Yeah, we'll look it. this up. I need up. a break. We'll, yeah, we'll figure it out. <laughs> we'll be back with more Dough Boys. What's up, everybody? It's your boy, The Spoon Man, and I want to talk to you about Helix Sleep. You know what? I love my Helix Moonlight Lux mattress. It feels like sleeping on a cloud. I've had it now for six years, seven years. It's been a while, and I love it. And my mom loves it. Wally and Irma love it. It's the best mattress I've ever slept on in my life. You should get one, too, and I'm going to tell you how. The Helix lineup offers 20 unique mattresses, including the award-winning Lux Collection, which I got, the newly released Helix Elite Collection, a mattress designed for big and tall sleepers, no thank you, and even a mattress made just for kids. So how will you know which Helix mattress works best for you and your body? Well, you take the Helix Sleep Quiz and you find your perfect mattress in under two minutes. And your personalized mattress is shipped straight to your door free of charge. I took the quiz. I did everything you had to do. It was an easy quiz. And my mattress was sent right to my door. It was easy to set up. Helix knows there's no better way to test out a new mattress than by sleeping on it in your own home. That's why they offer a 100-night trial and 10 to 15-year warranty to try out your new Helix mattress. Everybody's unique and everyone sleeps differently. That's why Helix has several different mattress models to choose from, each designed for specific sleep positions and feel preferences. Models with memory foam layers to provide optimal pressure relief if you sleep on your side, and models with more responsive foam to cradle your body for essential support in stomach and back sleeping positions. Plus, enhanced cooling features to keep you from overheating at night, which is an issue for me, and the Helix mattress keeps me nice and cool. And if your spine needs some extra TLC, they got you. Every Helix mattress has a hybrid design, combining individually wrapped steel coils and the base with premium foam layers on top. It's the perfect combination of comfort and support. I took the Helix Sleep Quiz, and I was matched with the Moonlight Lux mattress, like I told you, because I wanted something that felt nice and soft, like I was sleeping on a cloud, and that's what it feels like. And not only is the mattress the best I have slept on, but the setup was fast and easy. Helix mattresses are delivered in a box and straight to your door for free. Plus, Helix mattresses are American-made and come with 10 or 15-year warranty, depending on the model. Don't want to take my word for it. Helix has been awarded the number one mattress picked by GQ and Wired Magazine. It is even recommended by multiple leading chiropractors and doctors of sleep medicine as a go-to solution for improving your sleep. Helix is offering up to 20% off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners. Go to helixsleep.com slash doughboys. This is their best offer yet, and it won't last long. With Helix, better sleep starts now. Again, helixsleep.com slash doughboys. Do it. What's up, everybody? It's your boy, The Spoon Man, and I want to talk to you about today's sponsor, Smalls. Now, there are two little creatures in my life that I love more than anything. Their names are Wally and Irma. They're the best. I love Wally and Irma. They made me so happy for a good seven years now, and I hope they make me happy for many years to come. And, you know, I remember the days of feeding my cat Skibble, but that was before I upgraded my cat food game with Smalls. That's right, Smalls. I've always been anti-Kibble, but I never knew of other options out there until I found Smalls. Imagine being Wally and Irma and eating the same thing every day. Cats want variety in their diet just like we do. You got a picky cat? Well, Smalls has a one-minute quiz to help you find the best plans for your cat. I don't know if you listeners remember, but I used to complain about the stinky and smelly cat food my cats used to eat. It was awful. Well, not with Smalls. They got fresh cat food. I feel better knowing I'm feeding my cat real food not burnt kibble. I actually recognize the ingredients in a packet of Smalls food. When it comes to big pet food, you don't want to see how the sausage is made. Think pink sludge getting extruded at extremely high temperatures. Other cat food is often full of carbs, grains, and other ingredients that cats either don't need or are straight up harmful. 
Smalls takes a different approach. It is cooked gently, just like food would be in your own kitchen, and they work with leading cat nutritionists to create recipes that are exactly what your little fur ball craves and needs. The difference that Smalls makes is real. After making the switch to Smalls, 78% of cat owners reported their cats had shinier, softer fur, and 90% reported overall health improvements. That's a big deal. Wally and Irma are as smooth as anything. They, they slip out of my hands. They're so soft and smooth. And you can adjust or cancel your subscription at any time, easily skip shipments, switch up recipes, and add on goodies based on cat's needs and preferences. Smalls is the food I give to my cat, so if you want to give it a try and ditch kibble forever, head to smalls.com slash doughboys and use promo code doughboys at checkout for 50% off your first order plus free shipping. That's the best offer you'll find, but you have to use our code doughboys. One last time, that's promo code doughboys for 50% off your first order plus free shipping. Smalls.com slash doughboys. Do it. Welcome back to Doughboys. We're here with David Wayne discussing Sidecar Donuts, this week's chain, founded in 2013 in Costa Mesa, California. Uh, the menu is mm. focused almost exclusively on donuts and coffee. Mitch, I'm realizing now, because we're, we're recording later than we were supposed to, and this, it's almost 6 p.m., and I'm still working drinking this Ooh, coffee. i got to stop fucked. this. Yeah. i got to get this out of my face. Yeah, you're in trouble. We'll be I'm, up all night. I'm drinking coffee, too, and I don't drink coffee past 9 a.m. normally. Wait, really? Yeah. For me, my cutoff is like 3 p.m. I'll have like an afternoon coffee, but all have right. this late. This is If dangerous. you didn't have that coffee and you were doing Doughboys, you would be in a deep coma, basically. <laughs> I know. <laughs> That's why I just downed this to try to stay awake. Uh, there's seven <laughs> locations. I would say they seem to be mostly in kind of upscale shopping centers, mm. and that would make sense given the price point of these donuts, which we'll talk about. And it's just kind of the – we reviewed Crumble Cookies recently. It's kind of the same sort of model where they have like an ever-rotating lineup of donuts. They have like their core donuts, and they're always bringing in new stuff. I wonder who's doing – like coming up with all the new ideas. They probably have a team that's brainstorming and has a whiteboard. Yeah, they probably have like a test kitchen somewhere. Oh. I, got, I want to fun. ask you something about – um, you created one of the great movies of the of the of the. What, did it release in two thousand? It, it did release in two thousand. Wet Hot American Summer. Yeah, that's right. But I want to talk to you about camp food. Oh yeah. Did you go to camp when you were younger? I did. I went to summer sleepaway camp. Different, a bunch of different ones. And I also, uh, my, my my son just got back from sleepaway camp. That's I was asking him that's all so exciting. Did he, did he have fun uh, or not really? <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, generations are different. Um, <laughs> But uh, um, the food at my sleepaway camp was truly disgusting and in and inedible. It was, you know, every corner they could cut to serve 200 kids for as mm. little money as possible. And, you know, just giant industrial cans of the cheapest right. crap they could get. And, yeah, you know, and I remember they cooked um, for breakfast. They had some system where they would give you a platter of fried eggs that were all piled on top of each other and so and just like spread out all on a huge platter so if you wanted one of them you had to like sort of peel it off and it was so disgusting Ooh, jesus <laughs> that's fucking vile yeah Nasty. so for the most part you just kind of didn't eat if you could if you could help it and then we would sneak in in between meals because the one thing they had was this um big uh silver the box that you pull the lever and out comes fresh milk uh, and they had li like that little white tube out. The came, I don't know what, what it oh, was. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. 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 And that was the one thing that was great. Yeah. And so we would, and, and it was cold and it was, and so that was kind of what we subsisted on. Is wow. Sneaking in and stealing milk in between meals. <laughs> <laughs> I went to Camp Fatima. I've said this before, which was not a fat camp. Uh, it was a Christian camp. And my mom found oh. out that uh, one of the priests had gotten in trouble the week before, and then she still sent me there. And I don't really, she sent me to Camp Fatima still after she found this out and was like, don't let anything happen to him, basically. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> and so I went there and then, and so it was a, kind of a Christian camp. And then I went to Camp Burgess, a, a, which was a YMCA camp, mm. but a sleepaway camp. And that had kind of good food, weirdly. It was, it was in my mind, I remember it being okay. But uh, but but two weeks away. Did you ever do it? Did you ever do a sleepover? Camp? Oh, I had a couple. Of, I mean, like my my biggest camping thing. I think I remember is Boy Scouts. And so when we mm. go to a summer camp in Boy Scouts, we had to like you know do our own cooking and cleaning. Right. So there oh, was like yeah. a lot of like it was a lot more like 
paramilitary and we usually had shitty food because it was like 12 year olds who didn't know how to fucking cook anything and they were given shitty cheap ingredients um and then and then like inevitably someone would get sick because the kids didn't wash the dishes well of course so it was a that was that was a a mess uh i I also went to a music camp called camp arrow bear that i went to a few times and remember the food there being like okay like they do like a good like grilled cheese sandwich or like pancakes, like very oh, simple I'll, I'll stuff. Check it out sometime. All right. Yeah, you should go up there. <laughs> um, if you're between like the ages of like 12 and 17 and like you play like a woodwind instrument, right. that probably it's helps. It's like 1992. But, like, or yeah, yeah. That's probably the time to, to visit it. Uh, but yeah, we uh, it was uh, it was fine. I mean, I mostly hated camp because I just want to be home playing video games. That was my mm. whole thing. Like every time people were like, oh, I miss camp. I made so many camp friends. I'm just this fucking my, my Nintendo's at home. I will say the one thing that also I remember is when we were allowed to leave the camp for whatever reason, we yeah. would maybe go to this like the drugstore down the street and they made a pizza there. Whoa. Which it's I mean, the, it's the it's a thing about context in food because those pizzas, I can tell you objectively, were probably the most disgusting because they, they were served in between two like paper plates, I remember. And it was probably they had a bunch of frozen ones that they bought a year ago and they'd throw them in the microwave and give it to you. And we thought it was the best treat imaginable. Like, so excited. <sighs> yeah, right. Um, but I, I'm sure it was awful. It was the same sort of thing. Like, I remember Boy Scout camp when we would get like, like oh, we could buy an ice cream bar from right. like the commissary. It's like, oh, this is like the most amazing treat ever. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, I don't, I don't have fond memories of camp really. I don't believe in rose colored glasses. I think that the stuff was good, personally. I, I think that a lot of that stuff was good. I, I yeah, I, that's I, great. I think, sure. I think that I had, I, as a boy, I like, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe in that fact, priest in, was innocent. That's what you're trying to say. <laughs> Maybe give that priest another chance. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing happened when I was there. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> It'll come out in therapy. <laughs> That's why I refuse to go. <laughs> um, Quincy, Massachusetts is the birthplace of Dunkin' Donuts. That's which right. For me, early on was was that. I mean, after Lenders, it was it was Dunkin' was my bagel spot. My hometown, Lakewood, California, the birthplace of Denny's, but mm. Denny's was opened as Danny's Donuts. It was originally Donuts. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. And then they they changed it to Denny's? They changed it to Denny's. They like <laughs> became more of a diner, and then they were like, ah, change the A to an E. Okay. Weird. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> was Danny a priest of some sort? What happened? <laughs> Cleveland's uh, um, fast food local chain was Mr. Hero. Mr. Hero, Mr. Like Hero that. had a gr- was a great hero sandwich chain all over Cleveland, but probably not m- anywhere else. And also, Arby's was big in Cleveland. I love Arby's. Okay, you mentioned Arby's uh, when we were talking about what you, what you wanted to cover, and and I'm curious because I'm a, I'm a big Arby's fan. I'm an Arby's defender. My wife and I both love Arby's. Mm. Uh, I you know it's a place that's been used as a punchline a lot. Uh, but I but you have a fa- you have an affinity for it. Well, I remember. Oh, and there was another one called Beef Corral. I remember. Uh, Beef Corral. Beef Corral was a chain of like, you know, just above Arby's, you know, you'd sit down. Right. And, but, oh, God, it was gross. But uh, Sounds awesome. Yeah, so I mean, me and Nick got very excited. <laughs> I know you want, me to, I, you want me to come on the Arby's train with you. I don't think I can. I okay. used to like it and go there with my friends all the time. But I think as soon as I was old enough to be aware of what was going in my mouth, I realized that it was really gross. <laughs> and we would go and it was like a giant roll and then the tiny little like sort of swath of s- gross wet beef in there. <laughs> That's the, the I You got to get the ratio right. Some of them are too much yeah. fun. I still we I I came to like Arby's because I didn't have yeah. it much growing up. But also I think we just have bad taste is I the also issue. have to admit I don't think I've seen an Arby's in 25 years. There's the big hat one on Sunset That's near, true. near Netflix, where yeah. if you, if, where I where you there pick is, it. Oh, right. That 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 big old hat Arby's, yeah. which is the maybe the most famous one in LA. Yeah. I guess a is lot it of still open. I that one's still open. Still open. A lot of them are closed in LA. I be I think the next closest one is in Inglewood, and that's the one I'll go to regularly. But mm. it's like, yeah, you, you, it's it's like a lot of fast food chains. It's ex- unless the except for the biggest of them, the McDonald's and Taco Bell's of the world. They've a lot of them. Have been, Push, push to the outskirts. Yeah, we've um, talked about this on the show, but like yeah. we have, we, like the world is so bad, and local chains are shutting that you have to root for like beef corrals, to, right, right, to even survive. Um, but yeah, I feel like that's where you and I will have our final shootout, Nick. <laughs> 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 uh, 
Well, 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 this isn't the galley boy. <laughs> uh, okay, so Sidecar, I've been to a few times, and I do like this place. It is fucking expensive, and I, you know, I don't mm-hmm. want to bury the lead here. It is this is like a completely different category of donut from like the Dunkins of the world, or the, even the Krispy Kremes. Like this price is a, wise. price wise, yeah. you will you will be spending you know six dollars for one donut. And I mentioned before the record, but you know, I've been before and, and ended up in a situation where I get a donut and coffee, and with tax and tip, I've spent like twelve, thirteen dollars. That's a lot of money. Uh, I will say that these the total are, today was like was like a hundred dollars. We right? spent, yeah, I, I believe Amelia said we spent ninety five dollars to get, uh, you know, like something like fourteen donuts, That's, mm-hmm. so and four it, coffees, and, and some coffees. So it's it's a it's a place you'll be spending uh, a, a pretty penny. That's, That's called a, a baker's dozen plus one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we ordered. Uh, I it's, that said, I do like the donuts by and large, but just know what you're getting into. Uh, it, it's it's kind of the place, Mitch. It's not quite at Erewhon's level, but it's the kind of place like Erewhon that is just like it's kind of amazing that there's a market for this. You know yeah. that there is like there are people who are like, oh, I want to go to the. I mean, I guess I, guess I think it's, it's definitely sometimes. it's for sure it seems to be catering to people who don't look at the price at all. Yeah, sure. Yeah, you know, right. They're just like, here's the credit card. Here's donuts. They they taste good. Or or and or I think there's an element of well, this is such an occasional indulgence for me because that's kind of how I would think of it. Is like I'm not yeah. trying to get donuts all the time. Like oh, maybe I'll go get like a fancy donut when I on the the rare occasion when I just even the setup donut. of the dozen donuts is so weird. And they're put in single, fi- they're like a dozen donuts is a big flat box. No, it's not a traditional donut box. Yeah. It is a long like corridor. Yeah. It's like a thing that you would have like, like they ro- send like out like to do the sushi delivery. In. Exactly. Yeah. 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 And and it and it's a it's a it's a long boy. Uh, it's a long thin boy. And then inside there's just like uh, it, it, it's it's well they're laid flat so that you can see all of their artistry, which there is a lot. They do look yeah. great. They they're look great nice. looking donuts. Yeah, they look nice. Uh, so we got a bunch of them, and we got the regular flavors, and we got some seasonal flavors. Let's just talk through them. I mean, first off, were there were there any standouts? Were there anywhere you were like, oh man, this one was really hitting? We had there was a couple that were. I tried a couple good ones at first, Dave. You cut a couple that I that, yeah. The and the that first the first creamy one that had the, the lemony, passion fruit on it, the yes. lemon passion fruit. A passion fruit pavlova is the official name for the flavor. I was impressed by that one, and but then when I, I sort of came around and had another taste of it at the end, and I wasn't as excited. Mm. But that was the first bite I had, and I was like, okay, we're gonna have a bunch of fancy donuts. And yeah, I'm it, was gonna be happy. Nother, it was unique. It was unique. I never had anything like that because it's got like a big like kind of mound of cream. Like it's filled, but it's like like a, like a rose on top of it. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 and little little passion fruit seeds which i was trying to figure out what they were that's what they were passion yeah. fruit mm-hmm. seeds mm-hmm. you were like there's seeds on here and we we're just naming seeds you're just like no no it was definitely one of those seeds. donuts there was a lot going on there was a lot going on yeah, yeah. but i but i but i liked it and then honestly the first couple i tried because then we cut into that cookie dough yeah donut and that was also pretty great salted malted chocolate chip cookie dough which is another one that has kind of like a bloom of like uh, the filling coming out of the hole. And these mm-hmm. are also all very like indulgent, I'm sure highly caloric, like very heavy donuts. Super dense, yeah. Yeah. The um that one's a cake year donut and you know there's there's they have both cake and raised varietals and they're all like yeah just super duper dense and sugary. Uh yeah I thought that one was was great. Look I like the uh, the the among their regular ones, among the more simple ones, the butter and salt. I like the butter and salt. We had a little bit of a dispute because there was both a butter and salt and a gluten free butter and salt, and we we're having trouble discerning. But one of them, though, seemed like there was nothing in it. It just seemed like plain like bread donut, and then you get to this big wad of butter in there, yeah, which to me was absolutely disgusting. So that was their take on a malasada, <laughs> which I know is yeah. like a, a you know like a traditional Hawaiian donut. This version I thought was, which has like, yeah, a weird like burst of buttery cream inside. We found just the goop. We confusing. finally found the goop after. Right. We had cut the donut up so much and there was no goop. It was you know when there's no like goop. a really, like a soft butter that you would maybe get on a pancake in a fancy, or in a, like it was just, it, it seemed like just butter. Yeah. It was like table whip. It was, it was really yeah. strange. It was nasty. I was happy that we, I hadn't found it. And, t- and then when we found it, I was sad. It was disgusting. That one was a disappointment. He was crying. <laughs> <laughs> if they, they were like coming down right up until really the show sad. started yeah. <laughs> you pulled it together you're but doing great the, the other highlight though was the chocolat is that what it's called yes chocolat yeah. 
Maybe it's chocolate. But it was, you know, sometimes when they have one of those things like it's, you know, double chocolate, it's too dense. But this was, it's dense, but it had a very, it was a, a texture that I've never had in a donut. And it sort of has, a, in a good way, a goopy, brownie-ish, almost moussey. I loved it. No, I'm not a chocolate donut guy, and I thought it was delightful. Was it a chocolate crossover for, like, the movie? Yeah, I think yeah. so. Yeah. Well, there was like a like a little standee of Juliette Binoche like in it. Oh like, yeah, that's you, what so that that's was. what that makes sense now. That um, wasn't edible, by the way. No, it's pl- hard plastic. Yeah. <laughs> Are you okay? Are your teeth okay? Yeah, yeah. This is this is what this is a part of what the crying was too. <laughs> <laughs> we were like, "Don't bite Binoche. What are you doing? <laughs> oh, you swallow Binoche." Uh, so. Uh, yeah, sh- the the chocolate was really good. The chocolate was really good. The, uh, the like they they do an old fashioned. They do a vanilla bean glaze. I think those are both like capable executions. I do like their huckleberry, which is the their big old pink yeah. donut. Uh, that was fun. The really blueberry flavorful. donut I loved. That blueberry was... one is great. That yeah, one's that a home a run. Donut. That good is flavor the, too. Yeah, that is the uh, Susie's blueberry pancake. There, and there were a couple that were like, David, that you kind of do that, like the cinnamon one. There was like just Saigon couple, cinnamon crumb. Yeah, there, there, one. And then you were like, this is like the, a perfect version of this donut. I was like, you're right. It yeah, is. Yeah, they had like, it was a cinnamon crumb cake, coffee cakey donut where right. you, and you just wanted a nice hot coffee to go with it. When I say hot coffee, I mean hot coffee. I have this <laughs> issue. Everyone makes fun of me for it. This, I just came out. I don't know. I, I, oh, shit. Wow. wow. So that's not normally how you say hot. No. Oh, How, are you kidding me? <laughs> no, because well, no yeah. way would I do that. <laughs> I'm not a bonehead. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I not me neither. <laughs> I say when I say hot dog, people think, well, I did it. There it is. Hot dog. Hot no, dog. That's so that word goes with Jabba the, not with coffee. <laughs> <laughs> When are we gonna get that Jabba series? I want to see. I want. I want. I want to see more of Jabba. I want to know more about Jabba. What's going on with Jabba? What's going on with Jabba? Let's get I want to know Jabba. as a kid, as a as a little boy. Let's see young Jabba. <laughs> oh, Let's see little Jabba. He's thin and handsome, Jabba. Jabba boy, boy, boy. That's what it's called. <laughs> <laughs> so the passion fruit pavlova and the salted malted chocolate chip cookie dough, which we talked about, were their seasonal flavors. You know, they have a. They have a bunch of very specific things that you can only get in store or only on certain days. Mm. Uh, and so some of those we didn't get. The celebration cake we haven't talked about. We did touch on the, the which I think, you know, is a good sprinkly donut. Uh, the maple bacon we talked about. And I just, I didn't have any. I'm not eating pork, but like the, the, I was, the only one who, that. I was the only one who tried it. It sucked. Uh, it, like it, it was. Sucked. You just said flat out. It sucked. It, it flat out. Flat out. It sucked. And also, it felt. It was like the most stale. It was like hard to cut into. Wow. Did anyone else try it? Casey, did you try it? Or Amelia? I I did not. I thought that celebration no. one was not that interesting either. It was sort of. It wasn't, and it was also not felt almost stale to me. Yeah, there were a couple. That, it was funny because I was enjoying them, and then towards the end of tasting, I also felt like shit. But towards the end of tasting, I was like, some of these are outright bad. Well, okay, so that's the thing. Because they are hit and miss and because they are so expensive. And, like, if you go in store, and I've done this before, they they will cut things into eighth, and you can have a taste of a donut like you would at an ice cream parlor. So you can decide. Oh, that's have a, nice. Yeah, you can have a taste of some of these before you fully commit. Uh, but if you commit to one of these and, you know, again, you spend a, pre- you spend a pretty penny for it, it's going to feel real bad to have to eat all of this, you know, Maple bacon donut. If you if you're ordering it for the novelty, uh, mm. the yeah. What what else did we? The I just lemon pound get cake, that, that one. Yeah. yeah, but even the even that lemon one that I liked, I I wouldn't need a whole one of those. It's a lot. It's yeah, a lot of that. Yeah, you know, that's why I feel like if I if I go back there, I'll get the the coffee cake one or I'll get the the more plain ones. But maybe it's just because what I like. No, I think that's a good call. I think honestly, their best donuts are the things that are like elevated version of classic donuts. Or the blueberry one was yeah, that, yeah, that one's where I would do again. again. I'll like also say, and I think this is the this is the move for this place. Go with your sweetie. Uh, you each get a donut a piece, or you get three donuts total, and then you can divide and conquer. You don't have to fully commit to any donut. Great, thanks. Sure. Thanks for reminding me. I'll get take a baker's pair, fucking... which is three. <laughs> <laughs> Bring my fucking Wally and Irma. <laughs> <laughs> my cats. Uh, the coffee is, I think, pretty good here. I've had it before. I mean, this is a fine cup of coffee. No complaints. Is it they, fair trade? I'm not sure. Is it shade grown? 
I mean, I, I hope so. Why don't you fucking know this stuff? I don't have context for it. You should yeah. look. You should know before you sip. I'm sorry. I didn't <laughs> look if it was fair trade before I took a sip of the coffee. I was just looking for a little caffeine booze. All I know is I can't believe I just drank a whole coffee. I don't. I got to stop sipping this. <laughs> um. Any other? Uh, did we miss any flavors? Is there anything we didn't talk about? I think that's everything. I think that is everything. There was a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. I do think I, it's probably a fun thing if you have a budget and you want to get, you know, bring a dozen donuts to a party or something and people try tastes of different weird yes, things. Yes, right. That would be a good place and time to do that, I suppose. Well, that makes me think again of the crumble cookies model because that's very much what they do. It's like, it's like, hey, get a bunch of these cookies and bring them to an event. And you know what? One of the things we sell is a fucking uh, four-way cookie slicer because we know you're not going to not, not going to eat a full 800 calorie one. Of right. These. We know you're just going to have a portion of it. I, the right the right move here, Mitch, uh, to quote our good friend Unkar Plutt, is to take one of these donuts and have one quarter portion. And by the way, we're talking about Jabba's prequel. Is that is that cultural appropriation? <laughs> <laughs> I can say it. I can say it. <laughs> We should get a young plut. Let's get the young plut well, here. Is oh, the how uh, embarrassing that impression, huh, David? Jeez. <laughs> Does sidecar g- give you anything smaller, or is that they just have the full size? No, one they're size? all big boys. I, d- I don't think they what have. Is, uh, what, 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 what can I, the, uh, the the equivalent of the thing they have? Munchkins. At, munchkins. Yes, holes. I don't think they holes. have holes. But I don't understand why they just don't make smaller ones. Like, there's a good market. I would I would normally order a smaller donut if they had it. Yeah, I, I agree with that. What does sidecar donuts mean, anyways? What is what is what is this? What is this place? What the fuck is this place? Oh, by the <laughs> way, you said they were t- found in 2013. I just want to throw them a happy 10th anniversary. Happy 10th anniversary, oh, sidecar! How exciting! Yeah, happy 10th anniversary. Your place kind of sucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the message. <laughs> Have you ever ridden in a motorcycle sidecar? Because as a kid, I always thought that that would be the coolest thing in the world to be on a motorcycle sidecar. And then I've never had that happen. I've never life. done it. Yeah. Gabrus and I are often mistaken for the, the the two guys who are riding in the motorcycles. The Guinness. Yeah. You got to stop wearing sunglasses and cowboy hats. <laughs> but in food, side sidecar side. means, uh, like, what does it mean? Sausage on the side or something? Or or a drink on the side? I mean, I know there's a cocktail called a sidecar. Oh, yeah. What, but why is it called sidecar donuts? It doesn't make any sense. There's no reason for it. This place kind of goes down to as, like a crumble for me, which I also didn't love crumble. And and now I'm just more aware of it. This is like a hoity-toity donut place. I mean, basically, sidecar donuts is a total shithole. <laughs> <laughs> If you think about it, if you would you be happier if I brought you a dozen sidecar donuts or first of all, a dozen bagels already, you would be happier with a dozen bagels because everyone would take a bagel and they'd eat it. Uh, you don't mean me. You mean like in a scenario where in I'm In a scenario there. where I'm Got bringing it. something over. Got Two, it. a local donut place that made I got fresh donuts from. You'd rather that too. Well, yeah. I mean, if there's a local uh, yeah, look, I, my my conception of the donut is not even a change donut. My 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 the donuts I grew up with were places that were largely immigrant owned businesses. They were they were single places that they were all using kind of the same ingredients. And then you get the you get the dozen donuts and the the pink box. Like that's mm-hmm. what I always remember growing up. And um, there's a bunch of those like similarly named you know but independent donuts the shops that that are all over the place. Uh, the, the sort of gentrified donut we, we had, we went to a good place in Chicago, Mitch. Um, I enjoy that way more. Why can I not remember the name of anything today? Do Right Donuts. Do Right Donuts. Thank you, Emma. I went to Do Right Donuts in Chicago and (laughs) by the way, I'm noticing you're a guy who wears your watch facing in. How long has that been a thing? Uh, probably about two minutes. I didn't even notice. (laughs) <laughs> Wait, that's not your normal thing. <laughs> I thought that was your thing. I maybe it will be from now on. Let me see. Yeah, Mr. Cool. <laughs> I was about to do this. Yeah, this like, could okay. be a new thing. I'm like Wayne. When did this start? <laughs> I think on Doughboys. <laughs> <laughs>
Uh, the <laughs> yeah, it, it's uh, a, a, we went to Do Right Donuts in Chicago. Mm. Now, Do Right has a more extensive menu. They have breakfast sandwiches, which were great. They have fried chicken sandwiches, which were uh, like surprise, were quite good. Yum. They have yeah. a lot more going on there than just donuts. This place is laser fancy, focused on donuts. I'm saying, if you're a fancy donut shop, I don't know. I don't, I want something more. Almost, I don't know. If I were to open my own the great donut shop, I would spe- I would have like two kinds. And and make them great and simple and a little smaller mm. and be like these are just so good and you can you can eat like two of them and not feel like you want to barf. Wow, it's the crispy. It's like a, like a, like a like a. Well, I guess Krispy Kreme does have different, but you think of the just the old fashioned glazed donuts at Krispy Kreme. That's yeah. the money maker. And I, I there's just I don't know. I just kind of think this place sucks. I, I, I hate might, to be mean. I might not go. I might. I don't think I'm gonna uh, go all the way there with you with socks. But I don't I think it sucks. That. I was just saying that to to be funny. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't think it quote unquote sucks. But I. But I just. I don't know. There's not enough for me with this place. It. It just is. It's mm. kind of like whatever. Especially for ninety five dollars for a dozen donuts, thirteen donuts and two coffees or three coffees or whatever. Yeah. It's a lot. Yeah. It's a lot. It's a lot. But Give me Duncan. Give me Duncan over this. I'd rather have I, Duncan. This is, I mean, these but donuts also, are better than Duncan. happy 10-year anniversary. Happy 10-year anniversary, <laughs> Sidecar. Uh, we're going to take a break. We'll be back with our fork scores right oh, after wow. this. Fuck. What's up, everybody? It's your boy, the Spoon Man. Our next partner has truly made a positive impact on the most important people in my life. And no, I'm not talking about Wags. I'm talking about Wally and Irma, my cats, my two little fur balls that I love more than anything. And let's be real, having a pet is expensive. From natural pet food to pet sitting, when you go on vacation, the cost can skyrocket quickly. But one thing that's definitely worth it for your fur baby is pet insurance. I love Wally and Irma and want to do everything I can to take care of them. And that's why I use Embrace. This podcast is sponsored by Embrace Pet Insurance. It's time to upgrade your pet insurance game. Whether you have a dog or a cat, Embrace Pet Insurance offers customized plans for your pet's exact needs. Did you know vet care prices have increased by 33% from 2022 to 2023? That's insane. With Embrace Pet Insurance, you can visit any vet or emergency clinic. And if you have multiple pets to insure, you are eligible for a 10% multi-pet discount. Plus, they have a 24-7 helpline and optional wellness rewards program to ensure you prioritize preventative care for your pet so you hopefully never even need to use Embrace in the first place. I know some people think pet insurance is too expensive or not needed, but believe me, when facing a huge vet bill and choosing between your budget and your pet's health, you'll wish you had insurance. Embrace is actually very affordable. Don't wait for the unexpected to happen. Join the massive community of pet owners who trust Embrace Pet Insurance to protect their pet. Head to EmbracePetInsurance.com slash Doughboys and sign up for pet insurance today. Make sure you go to EmbracePetInsurance.com slash Doughboys or else they won't know I sent you. Do it. Football is back in full swing with another week of epic games. And who's got you covered on the action for every single one of them? DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. New customers can bet $5 on football and get $200 instantly in bonus bets. Wow. Nobody's missing out on the action this season. All DraftKings customers can take advantage of two new offers every game day this September. Get in on the NFL Week 2 action with DraftKings Sportsbook. Download the app now and use code DOUGHBOYS to sign up. New customers can bet just $5 and take home $200 instantly in bonus bets. Only on DraftKings Sportsbook with code DOUGHBOYS. The crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit www.1800gambler.net. In New York, call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY-467-369. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly. On behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort, Kansas, 21 plus age varies by jurisdiction. Boyd in Ontario, see dkng.co slash football for eligibility terms and responsible gaming resources. Bonus bets expire seven days after issuance. Eligibility and deposit restrictions apply. Welcome back to Doughboys. It's time for our fork scores for Sidecar Donuts. So, David, here's how this will work. We'll each go around. Yeah. Give a closing argument, if you will. Uh, some final thoughts on this particular chain. Yeah. And then at the end of that, give it a rating from zero to five forks. You can do half forks as well. Half or forks, or, forks. You can do quarter forks. You can think of a four to- four tined fork, and you can take whatever quantity of tines you want to use. All I'm right. ready. All right. Go, go ahead. Oh, I start. Yeah. Okay, my closing argument is qual- this is a this is a place that first of all they've been around for 10 years. And you got to give them some <laughs> s- 
something for that. Happy 10 year anniversary to Sidecar Donuts. Um, they certainly are making the effort. They're taking swings, mm. and I appreciate both of those things. Uh, some of the tastes are very, very good. Uh, they, some of the flavors I really enjoyed. Uh, and then some of them were more gross to me. Mm. Um, but that's okay. You can pick what you like. And so that's not terrible. And then, yeah, they're pretty expensive. Uh, so I'm going to just sort of, so out of four? Out of five. Out of five. I'm going to give it, I'm going to give it th- 3.1. Wow. Three and one. Three forks, Three, one time. One time. Yeah. That's wow. a, I think it's pretty on the, I think it's a perfect score. Thank you. Wow. I uh, mean, a perfect would be five, but. Sorry. <laughs> but I see what you mean. <laughs> I think it's a perfect for what it is score. Ah. Uh-huh. Sidecar Donuts, look, yes, now you can get a better donut at Sidecar Donuts than you could get at Dunkin', but I'd be happy getting a bacon, egg, and cheese on a croissant sandwich and a chocolate frosted from from Dunkin's Wags. I would. I would. Well, yeah, I mean, but that's apples and oranges. You're talking and about do right donut I, do right donuts, I do think did a better version of this Definitely and had not. more options. I don't know. I'm. I think I'm right around. I think I'm a three forker on this guy. I, wow. And also, I just, thought you were going to be more harsh. The donuts that were good tasted really. They did taste good. Yes. So there were like four donuts where I'm like, oh, these these taste great. And then there were like a few donuts that were like, oh, these are good, but you know, not the best, but they're good. And then there were a few that I was like that I thought like genuinely sucked. And if I spent <laughs> If I spent six and happy tenth anniversary to happy tenth anniversary to Sidecar, Sidecar Donuts, congrats, congrats on, on ten years. Nothing away from that. No, yeah. Yeah. Ten years of operation. Yeah. Hey, hey. Well, the Doughboys haven't made it ten years, so yeah, God, we're, we're, we're fucking we're, yeah. close now, aren't we? We're approaching. Jesus Christ. Ugh. <laughs> you all right? I just I didn't move out here for this. <laughs> yeah, neither of us did. That's this okay. Is, this is how this worked out. Yeah, you guys fine. are doing great. <laughs> yeah. We're Let's doing just fine. take a step back. Okay, sorry, you're We're right. Fine. You know, we've got eight years. Yeah, how about we've that? We got eight strong years together. Just like do like like Sidecar's got ten. We've got eight. And just like Sidecar, sometimes there's be a little nuggets of fun stuff in you, a you lot of get, I can just see you're getting riled up and you're gonna shake that microphone arm. Just and he's careful. gonna get sad. And, <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes there's little nuggets of good stuff with us, and yeah. a lot of the times we suck. Sure, and it's the same thing with Sidecar. Yeah. It, 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 it was. It's too expensive. It's not. It, there were too many donuts that I didn't think were great. And, but Doughboys doesn't cost six bucks a donut. Well, I. If you're part of the Patreon, yeah. If you subscribe <laughs> to the Patreon, you're basically like. <laughs> 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 but what would you rather have? A, a four episodes of a podcast a month or a donut? Well, I shouldn't have, I shouldn't ask that question to our listeners. Complicated <laughs> math question. <laughs> I I I think going well, are you know what? I'm gonna go two point seven five forks. Two point seven five forks. Wow. I don't know. I'm just sick of places like this. Crumbles the same shit. I don't know. I I, I understand your frustration, Mitch. Again, you know, I called it the kind of the it's kind of the gentrified donut. I think this is the the thing that hey, you know what? Do right is doing the same thing, but do right is doing it really well. They're doing and it right. So that's like, Mitch, that's really good. Thank you. Is Sidecar Donut gonna tweet at me with like a sad emoji face, and then I'll feel bad? Look, let's make the I'm social the one who clip. Has the most to lose. That's true. That's, that is true. Because, uh, you know, my whole thing is, you know, I, I work for as the spokesman for Sidecar. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, yeah, this is really. And so that's like my main income. You, I can't yeah, believe I, you didn't tell us. I should have mentioned that I, to you. We should not be reviewing it. Because yeah. first off, you can't really be objective. I'm about to tape a bunch of commercials next week. Oh, my God. Yeah, <laughs> yeah this is a bad idea on your part. Yeah. Well, anyway, here we are. <laughs> Uh, I mean, if you want to, us to take any of that stuff out, we can. We haven't <laughs> Might be a good idea. Yet. I'm just, just for my own business, but okay. We'll talk about. We'll, we'll talk, talk about we'll, it after. We'll, we'll figure it out. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about it after. Yeah, we'll see what stays in. Um, I, I think the 
here's the thing. I don't know if Sidecar is going to be upset by this. I do think they do do some really good donuts. Mm-hmm. I do think their coffee is solid. I Every time I've been in store there, the workers have been lovely. I think it's like a really, you know, it's, it's like a hospitable sort of uh, environ. And I think the this is a place that I'm not going to like not go back to. Like I'll go to this on occasion. It's not, but it, this is like an occasion. Put that on your website. Plus. So you're not going to make a, a trip. You're not going to be like, you know what? I'm going to drive another 20 minutes so I can go to Sidecar. Certainly not. No, it's because I have been in situations where like I I either live close enough to Sidecars or mm. I've been like like at lunch at Mendocino Farms. Like, oh, there's a Sidecar right there. Okay, I'll sure. get a little dill post meal treat. I was good today, you know. David, when you do your your ads for Sidecar and mm-hmm. next week, do you think you'll use a uh, hospitable Environ in your uh, ad? I think <laughs> I do think that's in the copy. I, uh, <laughs> I was at the headquarters today, just sort of reading over the copy to get comfortable with it before we lay down some takes tomorrow. I should disclose that during the WGA strike, I've been just kind of as a side gig doing writing some copy for Sidecar. Oh my donut. god! So, yeah, just. Brainstorming yes. donut names and then writing some of their ads and stuff. <laughs> I'm the only one who doesn't have anything to lose here. I've also been laying down floors uh, at the sidecar location. Oh, this yeah. is... <laughs> <laughs> and doing some varnish work. Yeah. You guys have vo- you both have a lot to lose in this scenario. Yeah, yeah. But I'm still gonna be I, I'll, I'll I'm still gonna be truthful here, which mm-hmm. is that I like a lot of the donuts in this place. Some of them are quite good. Uh, they're they're very hit and miss, and the misses are, you know, they feel like big misses because again, you're 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 spending some serious coin. But I want the place to succeed. I want to succeed. I bought fifty one percent of the stock of it last week. <laughs> oh, Mitch. <laughs> oh, yeah. that's my wife, by the way. The big misses. <laughs> <laughs> Um, (laughs) I think this place is right at the three fork threshold Mm. I think this place as far as accomplishing what it's trying to do a a fancy expensive donut I think it does it well Uh, I think it does it capably Mm. just know what you're in for and it doesn't quite take things to that next level that would put it in Golden Plate Club territory. I think there's a three forker, Mitch. Yeah, I feel like considering how much this place has been trashed, they did all right with the scores. They did all right. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean I didn't years. hate it. I'm just more like, it's just, it just doesn't justify spending this much money. That's my that I can't I can't divorce this from how expensive it is. If you add up all of our forks almost to ten, which is the anniversary. Wow, there you go. Like Nine point something, but still. Eight point something. Still maybe? pretty good. Still pretty good. We're we're, we're ballpark buds here. We're all mm-hmm. in the same general vicinity with our fork scores. Mm-hmm. And hey, speaking of buds, our bud Amelia is here for our wow. segment. Wow. Hello. Hi, Amelia. Amelia, come on, fork hop on over score here. Score and seven years ago. <laughs> That's really good. <laughs> that is good, and we probably will use that at some point. Yeah, we're going <laughs> to use that at some point. So just maybe in some of your you for... if you take out an ad in Vogue or something. You could <laughs> Uh, all right, so uh, we have a segment now. Amelia, a, a, a big part of the reason why David is here is because you used to, are you snacking on something? Hi, Moss. I was spitting the holes out of my mouth. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to have a mouthful of holes. Got for it. This. Sorry for asking you a question as you were doing that. I can, okay. I can smell. I can, it. I can smell the holes. Do you as want well. the rest of it? No, There's no. still some left. Uh, no, I don't want. Is that your old halls? Yeah. I'm not contagious anymore. I just still have a cold. <laughs> <laughs> we have a history. You get. You have a history. Yeah. You used yes, to work we did. together. Yes, I was David's assistant. So this is a uh, worlds colliding. Wow. So, can Can I ask you? Can I ask? Can I ask one more question? That was long ago when I used to have an assistant. <laughs> <laughs> I I, I want to ask you as uh, when when you were with the state. I want to ask this question. Yeah, when you, and you would be, you know, like spend a lot of nights writing and stuff like that. Did you have any go to spots that you go all eat together at? What a, oh, what a great question! Well, Mitch. we we went to well, we went to the Barrow Street Ale House almost nightly uh, in in oh, New man. York, and then there was Barrow Street, Barrow Street, Barrow Street. Oh. Sorry, I have a hall, a half of a <laughs> no, it's okay. Used <laughs> halls in my mouth. <laughs> um, well, we our office actually was on fifteen fifteen Broadway at forty fourth Street. Wow! Which and in and in fact now the new uh, ish Palladium Theater is there, and we're doing our show, The State Live, at that same address uh, in October. That's Whoa! Awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, that rules. very exciting. Um, state is on tour. The hyphen state dot com. Wow. Um, anyway, um, 
but there, so we would go to a lot of places in Hell's Kitchen and we went to like, there was a wings place and then I can't remember what it's called now, damn it. But it was so great. We used to walk there all the time after, you know, we would work very, very late and, and, and we would often do all nighters. Wow. I yeah. love it. That's I, I, I would, with my sketch group, we'd go to Paquito Mas, because well, that's where I went with Dutton mm-hmm. a lot of the time. That's like, cool. Oh, yeah. yeah. But that's Carmine's. Cool we'd order from Carmine's, which was across the street that was a big, like, cha- you know, family, uh, Times Square, touristy Italian place. I had an Uncle that Carmine was. once, and he used to chase me around going, Get in my belly. <laughs> Are you that really? bastard. Yeah. That's a, that's, yeah with, he wasn't that, actually that's my uncle. It's a lot to, oh, yeah. It's a lot to unpack there. A lot, a lot to unpack there. <laughs> But he wasn't your uncle? Yeah. I think you should come in for a session and we'll really sort of talk <laughs> through that. <laughs> he was like a family friend that he, was like I an uncle? I think he was my aunt's boyfriend okay. at the time. Mm. And he. this was like around the time where Awesome Powers was coming out. <laughs> that yeah. does I mean, make that, that yes. sense. So, yeah, he used to like terrify me, chase me around the house, go, get in my belly. But were you of the age where you were like, like scared of that? I was scared, yeah. I was wow. maybe like, I don't know. Look, we'll would he say, do you make my own honey, baby? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that's a problem. What's, I, I like, what is... If I, you want to be real, Nick, we've talked about before, you and I were pretty afraid of Fat Bastard when we first saw the movie, too. <laughs> Did your uncle terrifying. work at a Christian summer camp? <laughs> um, yeah, I think it was called, like, Fatima's. <laughs> okay, this is all making sense. Yeah. Fatima Bastard. Oh, God. <laughs> no, yeah. No, that was good, yeah. <laughs> you liked it. Give you a check mark for that. Okay, so we, <laughs> Amelia, uh, you have a segment here. Yeah, Ugh. it's bad though. Don't don't say it's bad. I was thinking, what if we just scrapped it and we played good guy bad guy? I mean, if you have an idea for how good guy bad Wait guy a is going to work, I want to hear about the segment. Yeah, we should, okay, we should okay. re- describe the segments and can, we'll decide I, can what I, to can do. Can I explain good guy bad guy? <laughs> Amelia drove up with me from San Diego. And she's That's like, right. And she's like, I'll play a game with you. And she's like, I'll name people in like the entertainment world. Little does she know, I don't know a lot of them. <laughs> uh huh. It and doesn't she, matter though. It doesn't matter though. And she's like, and you say good guy or bad guy. Okay. <laughs> and so we just she started listing off people. It was like good guy, bad guy. Yeah. The first example she said, she said Louis C.K. That was Got the it. first one. And I, Easy one. Yeah. <laughs> Job in the hut. Uh, Easy. Easy one. It's always a gray area. Yeah, I see the both. I see the good and bad in everybody. Mm. Ayn Rand. Yeah, well, well. Wow. <laughs> yeah. right, that's well, one we'll word. Do the se- we could do the actual segment. Yeah, let, let, read off your segments. We'll decide what to do. Okay, because you got a couple options here. <clears throat> you okay, need that halls back. Yeah, I'm gonna need that halls. Okay, so David, I know you love magic, so I wanted to do something, <sighs> you know, tangentially related related to magic. So, um, this segment is called Foodini. Ooh. So Mitch and David are magicians. Is that, about... a, is that a play on Houdini? It might just be. <laughs> That's good. I, I caught it because you know, I'm into I magic. Didn't really so I didn't think about that, but yeah. now that you say it, it it's yeah. a coincidence. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so Mitch and David are magicians about to perform on stage, wow. and they realize that their negligent assistant, Amelia, mm-hmm. forgot to preset all their props. Okay. So the, you two have to scramble to replace these props with food items that you find nearby in the green room. Okay. So the two of you have to work together to determine which food will replace each prop. And then Wags, Casey, Emma, um, as audience members, will determine if the illusions were successful or a total failure. Okay. So this is just a this is just bullshit. Like. So no, my, no, we know. This is yeah. <laughs> We oh, so this it. is not real. <laughs> this is this is not actual stakes. Like, yeah, is there a scavenger? So there's a scavenger hunt element. There's um, like props in the other room. Well, okay. So I'll 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 give you an example. So one okay. of the missing props is a key. Got it. So you have to go in the green room and sc- scrounge around and and find something that could possibly replace that. Got it. Cherry so stem. They... That's Ooh. good. That's good. Oh, they're not actually going anywhere. This is like an exercise of imagination. Yes, exactly. I thought they were Jesus going Christ. to the next room where you had a bunch of stuff that they could no, grab no. and come back in here. No, so you, they have to replace. If the, key is, if the key was to uh, unlock a lockbox or, right. or, or, or um, cuffs. handcuffs, yeah, cherry stem. Cherry stem, have you done that before? No, but I'm trying to play your game. Oh, okay. <laughs> Bullshit game. <laughs> if, we, if, we have, if we have multiple cherry stems too, we could also, you know, people tie cherry stems into knots in there. We could make it look like a key. 
Okay, yeah. Jesus. This let's, is uh, we, let's scrap can we do the, the second. Can we do the all? Can we hear the all? Because you, you had a we, second option. We should just this. we should just review halls instead. Let, let's, let's, hear, okay. let's hear the all let's for Houdini because maybe let's... this one will work. All right, this one's better. All right, so okay, you go. So you two are instead. Saving your magicians... the material for Wayne here. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, you two are magicians about to perform your greatest escape trick yet. Oh, okay. Inspired by Houdini's milk can escape, mm-hmm. um, we lock Mitch in an oversized galvanized milk can okay. full of I, true moo I, strawberry milk. Uh, strawberry milk. Yum. I appreciate that you said oversized. Thank you. you. Oh, you're welcome. And throw away the key. How are you fit in a regular milk jug? I mean, what do you expect? You know, okay, it's gotta be oversized. It's because it's it's the milk jug is not the size of a man. It's not to talk about your, your right. body type. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. Yeah, it has nothing to do with you. Yeah. Okay. Um, oh, wait, no, I, wrote, I saw you say oversized twice. Oversized, <laughs> comma, oversized. I wrote oversized in all caps. Yeah. <laughs> got it. Got it. Yeah, that is a little insulting. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's not personal. It was originally written for Shelly Duvall, so. That's okay. That makes sense. <laughs> then, then, yeah, it's fine. <laughs> But as you're pr- about to perform the escape, <laughs> you come to the horrific realization that the extra key is missing. Like the escape oh, key. Oh, yeah, sure. So you have to come up with a plan to set Mitch free using only the following food items that you found in the green room. Oh, boy. An apple, a carrot, string cheese, <laughs> a bottle of champagne, <laughs> Toothpicks and a straw. I love her New York accent. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, read the next line because I like the next line. The amazing Wygy will determine yeah. if their plan succeeds or fails. <laughs> yeah, and if Mitch it. doesn't, if Mitch doesn't escape the milk can, he will suffer a fate much worse than death. A toothbrush, a oh, straw. You'll have to drink the entire thing. Toothbrush, a straw, <laughs> champagne, an apple. Yes, car- and carrot and carrot. Toothpicks. Toothpicks and string cheese. And assume that Mitch and David would be able to communicate verbally despite Mitch being locked in a tank. And again, my role is just to sort of like hang out yeah. and then give a thumbs up at the am end. I under, right, cool. Am I under milk? Or can, so am I like. Can... I think you have a little bit of breathing room right okay, here. Okay. So you could be like this. I think maybe the milk is slowly falling, like filling up the. Like, so there's a little bit of time pressure. Yes, oh, there okay. is. Yeah. Well, first of all, I'd probably ask you, please. Turn off the milk hose. <laughs> that would be my first request. Well, I would also say start getting ready to drink some milk. Yes, yeah, that's that's true. <laughs> what was Houdini's milk can escape? That was he got into a milk can and then he got locked with real locks and audience members would make sure that it was real and they would lock it in and, and then he would break out of it. Wow. Yeah. That's not how he died, right? Did he die no, during a trip? He died in uh, October of nineteen twenty six when Somebody, he had a standing thing that anyone could punch him in the stomach and he oh, could handle it. That's right. But then somebody did it without giving him a chance to prepare. They, they just said, they just went up to him and punched him when he wasn't paying attention. We should do that as a segment instead. And they shattered his sternum <laughs> and then he went to the hospital and died. Oh, Jesus. Wow. Do you have a favorite, favorite magician? Um, well, the one that I have the most affection for just nostalgically is Doug Henning. Oh, yeah. I saw oh, yeah. Doug Henning live as a kid. Yeah, me yeah. too. I, lo- I loved him so much. And I actually recreated a feel of a Doug Henning piece on a stage at the Lodge Room in LA just a couple months ago with wow. Natalie Morales. It was great. That's cool. I mean, I got the band, the house band to um, recreate uh, some random uh, score that had been written for a Doug Henning TV special um, that, I, that I have affection for, and it was really fun. Wow. Uh, do, you, I, are, do you frequent the Magic Castle? or I am a member of the Magic Castle. Oh, wow. That's awesome. Oh. Yeah. I went over there with our friend Eva Anderson, yeah. uh, whose dad was the the very talented Harry Anderson. That's right. The, the, oh wow, legendary magician. Related. Yeah, amazing. Uh, and uh, he, I saw Eva do a show there with him, and it was incredible. I love that place. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I am drowning in milk right now. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Um, okay. I'm still. I just. I'm like still a little unclear on what's happened. I know. I get it. You get it. Okay. So I, I'm just judging. So I'll just hang out. <laughs> If you, if you know what what, what, what I would do. do is first I would I would take the carrot and uh, poke it with um, the toothpicks and use the string cheese as string to thread the toothpick all the way through lengthwise the carrot to create a straw, and then I would give the straw to 
my partner through the secret hole. You in have the milk a straw can. already. Okay, so frick. Fuck but this that. is good. Keep going. Keep going. <laughs> and give him the straw. All right, so and I now, got the straw. So now I'm he sucking. can breathe. Okay. Now oh, okay. he can oh, breathe. Okay. Use it as a as a breathing scuba, tube. Scuba, like yeah, mm -hmm. not scuba. What do you call that thing? Snorkel. Snorkel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so now he's okay for a minute. Thank then you. I would use the apple. Is it an apple? Yes. I would use the apple as misdirection for the audience. And I would say, everyone, watch this apple. I would toss it in the air, separate away from the thing. Mm -hmm. And while I'm tossing it, and and I'm going to say, watch watch the apple. And then all eyes are on the apple. I'm like, get out of the can. Get out of the can. <laughs> you got the, oh, you got the great magic. Waggy's attention with yeah. that apple yeah. tossing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> See? And then, and then I would, because I have my own outside key, <laughs> mm -hmm. and I would sneak it in there. Mm -hmm. And then I would use all the other items. The bottle of champagne to celebrate getting out at the end. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's fun. And could I eat the string cheese? I guess I wouldn't eat it after being a After dairy. drinking all that milk. Yeah. Do you think this is going to be like known as one of the great segments? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I <laughs> think so. <laughs> <laughs> I saw David Copperfield live. I've told this story a lot, but I, when I was a boy and I did, there was a meet and greet and he was, he was sitting on a chair on a table and he was just staring at me as I walked by. Oh my God. So, yeah, he didn't say That's the meet and me. greet? That was the meet <laughs> Very and greet. Strange. It was He's really a strange hot. man. Yeah, it was horrifying. And it was right. kind of when I stopped. I loved magic after that still, but it was like. Well, Weird to fall out of love. We're in a renaissance yeah. of great magic now. There's so many interesting shows and many magicians have put together small shows that are very deep and personal and awesome. Magic yeah. is one of those things, and I'm not as into magic as some other things, but I, I definitely admire it. And I like magic is one of those things that like pro wrestling. When I see like people who are really good at perform, I'm just like, oh, you're just just at another level of like talent. Like this is like you can do, you can be entertaining, but then also do another thing to a degree of mastery. Yeah, I got a I got a good question here. Yeah. Well, one, we have to see if the great Wygi. Uh, accepts our That's escape. That's true. Uh, the amazing Waggy. Sorry, the amazing Waggy. Uh, you... I'll say, uh, bravo, <laughs> oh, bravo. We, did it. we got out. <laughs> right, I can't believe we won. This is the greatest trick and the greatest segment. <laughs> now may I have that apple? Um, so pop the, ch pop the champagne. Pop the champagne. Nick, fuck, Nick fucked an apple okay. a long time ago. <laughs> How do you pop into champagne? What's the the the, the space work for that? Because I was doing like a. Yeah, that's, that's, right. Right. that's about right. That's like I'm wringing out a, a rag. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. That's a camp fathom of. <laughs> but my father would always make uh, open me a soda pop by going. That's great. Whoa, Ooh, that's cool. Wow. Yeah, that's yeah. You're. Mm. I, don't know, I, try I like it. the saber guys. We're like. Yeah, the saber's cool. That feels magic adjacent. Ow. Watch yourself. Uh, <laughs> here's my question. Favorite magic food. Now, hold on. For me, because <laughs> we were jumping in on that. <laughs> hold on, Not everybody. Yet, everyone. <laughs> For me, it will be chocolate lava cake. The reveal. That's fun. Oh, okay. That's that's There's pretty magical. Pop rocks. Do you have? Do you have? Do you have? Oh, I know mine. I don't even know what it's called, but that one where they bring it to the table and all the pieces are moving. Those like li they look like little pieces of paper, but they're food. You know what I'm talking mm. about? What's that called? Where it looks like it's alive. Oh, I know oh. what you mean. Yeah, like. Like squid? It's not squid though. It's it looks like little pieces of paper that are like blowing in a fire. But I can't remember what it, you know. Some you guys know what I'm talking about. I know what you're talking about. I don't. Yeah. Know, I have I no what idea called. what it's called. Yeah. yeah. Uh, That's that cool was. As hell. It's making me think though of like my the, the showmanship I love. Is it Benihana when they do that little oh, volcano the onion? Best. What an <sighs> absolute treat. The volcano mm -hmm. is good. I gotta okay. say Benihana. You go there. You. You're getting your money's worth. That's a five fork chain. Like, That's to me, Benihana is like the platonic ideal of a five like fork. Like they chain. come in there and they sell it. Yes. Like, especially if you get a good one. Oh, it's so good. Great. I have to say something else just just reminded me of very off topic. There's a shabu shabu place in Glendale I went to. It's one of the best meals I've ever had recently. Wow. Yeah. And you just go sit there. It's casual, but so great. And they bring you all the stuff and you make it yourself, you know, in the thing. It was so great. I, I got to try this specific spot because. A, 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 a like I've had some underwhelming shabu shabu. Me too. In the past. Very much so, yeah. and that's why I, I I noted it. Yeah. Wow. Okay. I'm trying to think of like other trick foods. Shabu well, shabu kind of sounds like a thing you would say in a like a magic act. Too. Yeah. It does right. feel like a magic yeah. reveal. Yeah. Well, we went well, to that a, tiki place at, in San Diego, and they gave us a scorpion bowl that was lit on fire. Yeah. And they rang the bell. Right. That was or, fun. Or what about the desserts that are on fire? You know, like the love that. I like that. Love that. 
I melted Bananas my Foster. straw in that in the scorpions bowl in the scorpion. You bowl. melted oh, your you plastic melted straw mm-hmm. in a that was yeah that, that was harrowing. Mm-hmm. Uh, but still not as bad as when I lit my shirt on fire in a bar. Yeah, in we went to a tiki bar and Wags uh, lit himself on. <laughs> my shirt sleeve lit on fire. I'll tell you something though. Give give me a Hank's bagel. I'll make that disappear. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right, that was soon to be a recurring segment. <laughs> Just I mean, like I mean, did you have a did you have a magic food? You were gonna say something. Oh yeah, right? I'm sorry. Oh no, it was just the scorpion bowl. But there's okay. nothing very magic about that. It's just a drink on fire with a bunch of straws in it. That's magical. I think it's magical, especially Aww. if you make it. It's, it's, it's what go. you it's, bring it's to it. It's about the other people you share the straws with. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you like does a scorpion bowl? Do you have a little bit of fondness for it because of your father? Because of my yeah. Um, I does guess I never know really... the, does... I does. Do you know about my dad, Scorpion? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I never really make the connection between you know Scorpion Bull and sure. Scorpion Dad, but um, maybe I'll start thinking about it. Yeah, I mean it's just because his name is Scorpion. Yeah. And that, that's like a thing that like if my if my dad's name is George, if there was like a George, George Bull, that's like the first thing I think it was like yeah. that's like my dad. So <laughs> there's a magic food that I've heard a lot about recently called magic mushrooms. Ooh. Oh, I've heard about this. Ooh, yeah. yeah, I've heard that. <laughs> Never mind. I was I just realized I was gonna say the wrong Alice in Wonderland thing. Um, let's move on. <laughs> well, let's hear. I was it. gonna say that I was, I've heard that one makes you smaller, one makes you large. But I was like, that's a pill thing. That's not the fucking mushrooms. And if you say the wrong Alice in Wonderland thing, you will get canceled. Yeah. That's what I'm afraid of. That's why now I just said it here. I mean, hopefully that preface will get me out of the hot water. But um, that still, I think that still works. Don't cancel me, Lewis now- Carroll. Lewis Carroll. Did nothing wrong. <laughs> um, I thought of another magic food. Um, the halls. There we go. They help make a cough go there you away go. for a little while. That's, that that's is pretty true. magical. <laughs> <coughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> magic mushrooms also come in chocolate bars now, too. I've yes, heard yes, that. Yes, I yes, ate yes. some last what summer. What about Pop Rocks? Pop, oh, pop no. Rocks are huge. That's, pop Rocks are that's, fun. That's, that's a magic, magic. food. That's, that's magic. a hoot. That's magic. Uh, all right. Just like a restaurant of our feedback, let's open the feed bag. And today we have an email from Ryan Burgerspoon from Texas. That can't be their real I name. I don't think this is their real name, Mitch. I think this is a portmanteau okay. <laughs> of my nickname, the Burger Boy, and yours, the Spoon Man. I wish it I was think that's, their real name. That's my honestly. guess. I hope it is their real name. I, Ryan Burgerspoon, if that's your legal name, please write back and let us know. Yeah, or change it to that. With or a screenshot of your license. Yes. Send us include, your license. Include the indra- address. Please. Yes. Uh, long-time listener, first-time responder, I love this show. That's very nice. I love listening to your commitments to the WGA and SAG Strikes 2, Go Unions, all caps. That's nice. Uh, as an aspiring creator, I'd love to hear how y'all broke into writing and acting. What's your story? What wow. led to your art forms? Secondly, please share your hopes for future writers and actors that try to get into the business. Uh, with love, Ryan Burgerspoon. Very sincere question. We don't normally get like these sorts of questions mm-hmm. in the feedback. Yeah. It's usually like... Like, what would you rather, what food would taste better with cum on it? Yeah. Like, oh, that's an interesting one. I'll take that one. Yeah, please, yeah you can answer that one. <laughs> or like, what's ketchup? You yeah, know? what is that? <laughs> Are you dumb? Yes, I'm dumb. Oh, oh okay. Well, um, I did theater. I'll answer this sincerely. I did theater camp as a boy. My sister got cast as Fagan. And uh, and Oliver Twist. That's cool. When she was in fifth grade, I was in first grade. Oh, so I, this didn't like just happen. No, 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 no. Okay, no. this uh, when I was a boy, and I was like, "That's so- Oliver Twist, the one who had his thumb up the Lou Dobbs." <laughs> <laughs> it's in the play. Okay, okay. Um, I have to reread. It. <laughs> but she played Fagin. I was like, "That's so cool." And then I auditioned for my fifth grade play, and I got uh, the role of a munchkin in The Witches of Oz, which mm-hmm. we mentioned munchkin, munchkins earlier. Different kind of munchkin. Different kind of munchkin. Uh, and then I was like, I like doing that. And then my godfather's son, Neil, who owns the Fat Cat, he did a super soaker commercial, which I thought was really, really cool. And I was like, I like that world or whatever. And then I He did, was in a super soaker commercial. He was in a super soaker That's commercial. Cool. He played the he played like it was him and two other kids and they played Blues Brothers. I didn't know they did any commercial production like in the Boston area. Yeah. He wow. played he played like a blues brother and they they didn't get invited to a party and then they like shot the, the kids at the party with a super soaker. Yeah. Maybe a little like 
too insult-y for these days. It seems <laughs> yeah. like bad vibes, but it was great at the time. I was like, I want to do that. So I went to theater camp. And then I, when I went to high school, I stopped doing it because I was afraid of getting made fun of. And then when I went to Ithaca, that's when I got into cinema production wags. And I realized I could work in that world. And then I came uh, out here and I did UCB. I saw you doing improv at UCB. Oh, yeah. But also a lot of Saturday Night Live and Conan in the state were uh, were very much uh, inspirations to get into things like that. That's the truth. I didn't pick out this question, by the way. I'm embarrassed, but I'm being sincere. I picked out the question. I thought it was nice. That is, that's nice. It is a nice question. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll answer. Um, I, th- I like. Okay, so the question is, what led us here? I mean, I had kind of a winding road because I started in the video game industry, and that's mm. where I, what I was doing in my twenties. But while I was doing that. I was I started taking um, improv classes and performing first at this shitty little theater uh, south of UCLA campus where I went to school uh, called the called Ultimate Improv. It's now called the Improv Space if it still exists. So I performed a little bit there. It's where I met people like Jordan Morris and Heather Ann Campbell uh, way back in the day. Matt yeah. Jones, uh, who we we still know, uh, and um, from there, then in 2005, the Upright Citizens Brigade. Theater opened in Los Angeles. I started uh, performing there and and uh, taking classes there, and then uh, and then performing there, and then was on an uh, improv the improv group you mentioned. I was in that improv group with uh, you know with Heather Campbell, with uh, Neil Campbell, Paul Rust, uh, Drew Defonso, Marks, David Harris, Jim Woods. Uh, I think that's everyone. Um, and I did that for years as well as doing a sketch group where I, with some of those same people called a kiss from daddy which is how i met you because we shared a bill with your group the birthday boys mm-hmm. uh but basically from all that i reached a point where i was able to have some opportunities to write for first for um uh you know the onion funny or die and then ultimately for uh uh for uh tv and once you i wrote did that for the onion now you talk about them mitch <laughs> It's a great observation. Thank you. Uh, but I was doing sort of that. I was doing that stuff like writing for the internet and then writing for the writing for TV. And at that same sort of point, I, I left the video game industry, which I had as kind of a day job while I was doing all of this. And then you left the comedy industry. Now you podcast. Now I do with podcasts me. about fast food. Uh, but yeah, th- this is it's it's like uh, yeah, I did that for a bit, and then we started Doughboys in 2015. I don't know. I don't. I feel like I did a good job of answering that question. But it's basically that I was just kind of chipping away at it for a while, doing it as a side thing while I was working in, you, video, you, in video games and then ultimately had some opportunities to actually and make money for it. And you find people that you, that you like that do it too. And, yeah. And you hang around them and, and they do it and they can inspire you and do stuff with you and that's helpful. But ultimately it seems like you just you do have to do something that other people see in order to to have some sort of connection to it, what, wh- whether that's putting it on stage or making a sure. video or what have you. Um, but uh, but uh, I, I do want David to answer, but Amelia, I want you to share your story as well, like how you kind of got into this industry and, and why you decided to pursue this. And why oh. you ended up here. Yeah, why you're working <laughs> for us. <laughs> Good, I ask myself that question every day. Um, well, first off, that first question that you asked, what what food would taste better with cum on it? Yeah. Honestly, sidecar donuts. <laughs> <laughs> that would be an improvement for some of them. Yeah. Uh, He's right. They, and I yeah. was saying to Mitch, sidecar donuts, more like sideline donuts, because they gotta stay stick to the sidelines. I wow. agree. She's hundred percent right. Yeah. Fuck. <laughs> David doesn't approve. <laughs> um. To, okay. So to answer the real question, um, well, I started out m- like Mitch doing theater. Yeah. I and got. We both did Ithaca. Went to we Ithaca. Both, both went to Ithaca. I, I uh, was in the for seventh grade. I auditioned for Cinderella. Wow. And I got Cinderella, and I, I was hooked from then. I was curly um, in you Oklahoma. caught the bug. I caught the I... bug. <laughs> the acting bug. Um, and yeah, I just did all the plays in high school. We did Cinderella a second time, actually. Did you get it, did you get it twice? I, did, I got Cinderella Holy a second shit. time. <laughs> wow. Uh, Rodgers and Hammerstein's, Hammerstein's Cinderella, so I know every- My favorite every, one. It's the best one. And I think um, you're both Rodgers and Hammerstein came to your production, right? Yes, they did, yeah. as a matter of fact. <laughs> they loved you. <laughs> Went to Ithaca, uh, different time from Mitch, but uh, yeah. Park School of Communications, mm-hmm. went in for film and TV, and actually a documentary um, as well. Came out here, started working for you right away, basically. That's me, David. Yeah, David for Wade. For those listening. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sometimes I forget that like nobody can see us, but um, 
I think the first week I, I moved to LA, I went on the set for Feudal and Stupid Gesture. I remember. Wow. That's when we I met. remember meeting wow. you yeah. very, very vividly. Oh, wow. Mm. And, um, we're, yeah, we we're, we're, worked for you for a little bit at Abominable and just a little, some hodgepodge jobs here and there. Oh, at, uh, uh, the Tim and Eric production company, absolutely, absolutely. Oh, as yeah. well. And here I am working for Doughboys. <laughs> Jesus, talk about it. your your resume should be backwards. Like I feel, <laughs> I feel bad. It really, it really should be. Uh, I'll, I'll just interject real quick, and I, I just because I mean I'm assuming Ryan that you you are a you know a, an adult and maybe have a, a different career right now because that was kind of my path and like I didn't go to film school. I didn't have a paid job in like writing anything until I was 30. So like I, I would just say like I went I was a math major. I worked in uh, I, I worked in a more of a computer programming slash design uh, profession for a while. There is like a path to go that route too. To, like don't necessarily feel like you're you're stuck because you didn't go to film school earlier. Uh, but David, I'm I'm curious. Like like uh the, it, I mean I think a lot of people know your story, but like uh yeah would would you like to uh, how how would you characterize? Well, you... I had a very lucky chain of events, yeah. and I feel like everyone everyone's path is different. But for me, I yeah, I did go to film school, and there I met everyone who's in the state mm -hmm. uh, early on. Great crew, and we started working together as a group, you know, early in college, and then I we just sort of kept doing it as we graduated, and we lucked into having a door into MTV. And by the time we were in our early twenties, we were doing that show. Right. Uh, so it was really, and we we knew at the time how how lucky and fortunate that was. But um, also, we were awesome. Um, <laughs> uh, and then, but but you know, and then it's been up and down ever since then. You know, and we, yeah. after that show, I was unemployed for three years, and then eventually made Wet Hot American Summer, and and but it it's been you know a, an adventure of of struggle and success on and off since then. Did you have a, a point if, if you're if you're comfortable sharing? Because I have I know people who are like on a TV show, like we're like like we're like a regular on TV show and then reach a certain point where they're like, OK, well, I have I have a day job again because, you know, like it's yeah. kind of a feast or famine. Did you have a period after the state where you like kind of went back to a, a you know, like a, a square job? I never had a day job. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, which I is one of my great shames in life. I was thinking about this. We were talking about my sisters all worked at Swenson's and sure. um, all my sister, my siblings all worked at day jobs and real jobs all the time. Um, and I definitely grew up a little more spoiled and I, I had a DJ service when I was in high school and I did magic shows, but I always did I things like that. You, you know? did magic shows? I did magic shows when I was 12. Whoa. Yeah. I, w I would go to birthday parties for like six year olds. What was your showstopper? Uh, th it was the eminent, it would, it w I had a, um, glass of milk and I would pour the milk in the glass and then I would put a little cone over that and then lift it up and, and, and now it's filled with M&Ms. <laughs> That's, That's fucking good. Great. That's great. It's also really great. great. Just a yeah. And then I'd give it out to the kids. That was, that was the, the, the signature call calling card. Did you, you want to do the trick for the dough boys? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> can, can you do that for us? Uh, just... <laughs> one day. <laughs> okay, cool. I literally am sitting here thinking, how does that work? That was pretty cool. <laughs> um, you did a magic show recently too, right? I did. I was just mentioning it earlier. Oh. Uh, uh, I cut a woman into three pieces on a stage. You can see it on my social media. Wow. Um, but uh, then, what? oh yeah. <laughs> just seems like something you'd like. You want to cut a lady up? <laughs> you want to cut a lady up? No interest in cutting up a lady. <laughs> But throughout my 20s and 30s, I didn't really have any expenses either. Mm, uh, and so, sure. but I definitely struggled a lot and I had, I worked my ass off every day hustling, but often to no avail. And then things would come and things would go and, you know, still like that. Yeah. That's the thing you never get out of, I guess, in this industry. I guess that's the last thing to leave them on. You can, you can highs and lows and forever. <laughs> Uh, I hope with that that uh, that was what you were looking for, Ryan. Um, I did. Please share your hopes for future writers and actors to get in the business. I don't really have a, any real great insights there. Other than I hope it it's it's uh, continue. It, it becomes a sustainable profession again. Uh, find people that you share a sensibility with. Mm, that's the big and one. And stick yeah. to your guns. That's what I say. That's great advice. Love that. Don't try to sell out first. Well. <laughs> we also did that too, but can, that's, yeah. that can be nice too. <laughs>
If you have a question or comment about the world of chain restaurants, you can email us at doughboyspodcast at gmail.com or leave us a voicemail at 830-GO-DOUGH. That's 830-463-6844. And to get the Doughboys Double, our weekly bonus episode, join the Golden or Platinum Play Club at patreon.com slash doughboys. David Wayne, a delight to have you here. Thank you Such so much pleasure. for being here. Such a pleasure. So nice seeing you guys. Thanks. Yeah, it's great to see you as well. We're a fan of so much of the comedy of you've created. And, yeah. and, uh... The fandom is mutual. Oh, man. We're sorry. We were talking about <laughs> summer camp earlier, and I, re- I had a memory I haven't thought about it for a long time of like describing a state sketch mm. to other kids at Arrow Bear Music Camp. It was the it, it's a sketch where it was like a bunch of international symbols. Do you remember that one? Sure. Yeah, yeah. And I just remember just talking about these kids and they're like, oh yeah, and some of them were like, oh yeah, the state. And I was like, yeah, you've seen it, you know. Yeah, it's it's a it definitely been a, a a thing that's been in my uh, my life for a long time. So I great, love to, that. great to talk with you. So good to be here. Yeah. Man, you probably fucking botched the explanation of that sketch. I pretty much described it just as I did now. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, David, an odd time to be plugging anything, anything you would like to uh, direct people towards? I do have something. I I have the Middle Age Dad Jam Band. Wow. Which is is me and Ken Marino and a bunch of guests and friends. And it's basically this good time jam music show that evolved out of just hanging out in my garage. And we've been having these really fun shows. And now we're touring all over the country. <laughs> That's fucking awesome. I know it sounds like a joke, but it's true. And um, madjb.com, Middle Aged Dad Jam Band. Wow, check that out. And the state uh, is. And the state is on tour. Is on tour. That's so cool. There you go. Check all that out, and that'll do it for this episode of Doughboys. Until next time, for the Spoon Man McGregor Show, I'm, I'm Nick Weiger. Happy eating. Yeah. And congrats on 10 years, Sidecar Donuts. <laughs> Want to dress like the Doughboys? Of course you don't. But you will want to wear our all-new Doughboys merch. Check out our completely revamped merch line in partnership with Kinship Goods. We've got high-quality shirts, hats, aprons, totes, and much more to come. Wow! Only at doughboys.kinshipgoods.com. That's K-I-N-S-H-I-P goods.com. Sources for the intro are in the episode description. That was a HeadGum Podcast.